three, and hello everyone! I am Zazubar, and welcome to something I have been anticipating for like six fucking months. Welcome to the Day of the Doctor, full-on, blown-out, spoiler review. And I can't do this by myself. I had to accrue almost every single Doctor Who fan that I fucking know in order to achieve this incredible goal. And even then, Join you couldn't get everyone. I got mostly everyone. Joining me, and I've done Doctor Who videos on my channel before, so I had to carry over two fan favorites from those videos in order to, to make this truly work. So carried over from those reviews, I have my fellow geeky gentleman, Sid Part 2, a.k.a. Hey. Ian Harrington. Hello. And also joining me from those reviews, I've got a man who hides his face in the shadows of a Deadpool mask wearing an 11th Doctor costume. I have! Deadpoolzilla. When are we gonna finish those reviews, by the way? Never. Aww. It's gonna. It's gonna be. It's, it's like a so cliffhanger. good they'll never have to be finished. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just keep them wanting more. And also joining me, I have the only man in the universe that I can call a fellow demon from outer space. I have Super DM sixty four. Good to be here. And being a demon from outer space, this Doctor fellow worries me. Um, yes! Oh, right. Aren't you terrified? Right, yeah. It's a problem. And joining me for the first time on my channel, he is renowned across the internet as an expert on the Whovian condition. I have Duke Loops 1993. Renowned? Yeah. I oh, renowned oh. for shit. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting your information? Whoever told you renowned lied. Listen, dude, I, I smoked a lot of weed, <laughs> I was in a back alley, and some dude just mentioned your name in passing, and I was like, that dude must be yeah, world renowned. Yeah, those Loops guys' videos are shit. Duke Loops the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hell and then yeah! immediately I became a devout fan. Um, uh, except when the weed wore, wore off, then I just stopped. Then you um, didn't know what the hell you were watching, and then you were like, yeah, okay, <laughs> I I guess. Like, what is this? Oh, God. 50 Days um, of Who? That sounds like a series that'll finish. <laughs> <laughs> it will. Like, I just don't know when right now. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm really busy. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's, 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 see, it's any Doctor Who videos that this group tries to start will never be finished. It's, it's a trend. So we should start And that. on that, in, in, in that spirit, this review is now over. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. We had hope our you piece. enjoyed our hope you enjoyed our mini thoughts on Day of the Doctor, um, which are none. Every detail put down and just exquisite wordplay. It was great. We made wonderful, wonderful notes that you will never hear. Um, yes, they were. We our thoughts on this film were so perfect, so eloquently spoken that they cannot be heard by human ears. Unless you had a decoder ring. Yes, unless you have that. For like the time so vortex, your mind would not be able to contain it. <laughs> so if you, if you go on Amazon and buy, like, fucking old school, like, wheat oats or something, you will be able to listen to this podcast on our thoughts on Day of the Doctor. Um, anyway, with that said, this is a big event. And in order to fully... Uh, and completely give our thoughts on Day of the Doctor, we need to really cover this thing in every faucet, every little minute detail from beginning to end. But before we get to that, because at the time of this recording, and probably I'm not going to post it that, that long after, hmm, not everyone's probably seen it, because it's, it's brand new, and uh, you know, there's a chance that not everyone's seen it, and also it might be good to get our general thoughts on it out there before we get into specifics. So we're gonna do like everyone is gonna give their brief, brief, summarized, non-spoiler thoughts on the day of the Doctor, without going into like no specifics outside of the trailers and the posters, and that's about it. Just what you guys, your basic thoughts on Day of the Doctor. So I think we'll go in backwards order of how I introduced you guys, because that's kind of an interesting order to go in, and for no other reason. So Duke, your general non-spoiler thoughts on the day of the Doctor. I thought it was really good. Um, I was, just like you, very interested in seeing this. This has been, you know, 
good good while coming. Um, once we started to get more details about it, like who's going to be in it, what's going to be in it, I was definitely getting curious. I was really happy to see David Tennant back. He's my first Doctor. He's my favorite. I'm just happy as can be to, to see that you know he was coming back. When I heard the Zygons were coming, that was a big deal for me. Big, you know, no classic hula, and they're a uh, definitely a. Uh, they're, they've only appeared in the show once, like one serial, but they're definitely a fan favorite. They show up in books, audios, and all that. I was, when we found out John Hurt was going to be in it and what he was, like, vaguely, well, you know, what they what we saw in, at the end of Series 7, I was really curious what this is going to be, and I ignored all the insane fan rumors about him. Everyone was thinking, because a big rumor was going to be that, uh, oh, they're going to completely retcon Eccleston out and replace him with John Hurt. Oh, which God. was stupid. Which is re- which can't happen for one reason. They paid a lot of money to uh, use Eccleston's face on merchandise. They're not gonna do that. Yeah, so that would be weird. That would be very, very re- weird and controversial if they did it. And I, I definitely, uh, when we found out what he was, I was interested to see where it would go, and I think I got a good payoff out of that. I think as a story, it's great. As an anniversary celebration, it's fine. I mean, I don't think you can necessarily have something perfect. I don't know if there's a – in this situation, there's no real thing that's perfect. You either have a giant love letter that just constantly points out things to the past or have a generally just a good grand story that – I think just in general, when you do multi-doctor stories, you need to have a story that requires – more than one you need to have a big threat and i think most of the times as that's happened in any in most mediums they find at least a big threat that on paper works you know execution that's there's a bunch of them that's qual that you know we could talk about some other day but all in all i i really did like this okay so that's good Dylan is BRB, so we can't jump to him at the moment, so we're going to go instead to you, Deadpool Zill, your general non-spoiler thoughts. I absolutely loved it. Again, like uh, Duke said, it's, uh, it's very, it's, it holds up as a 50th anniversary. I mean, it's nothing like, uh, oh my god, this is uber spectacular, but for what it did, it did a good job, and it left a very good impression on where the show's going to go now. And in that regard, I can't help but like it. I mean, again, Tenet, it was, it was great to see Tenet again. It, John Hurt did an amazing job. And the Zygons were, you know, it's pretty cool to see another classic villain come back. You know, Moffat doesn't really, um, doesn't really like to do a lot of the classic monsters, but we've been kind of seeing a trend, you know, from Great Intelligence, Ice Warriors, and... Until the Great uh, Intelligence was a classic. Yeah, he was a, he was a Troughton villain. Oh, Okay. Uh, and uh, now we have the uh, now we have the Zygons now, um, which I'm hoping we'll see more of in later series. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I, I loved it. All right. So since Dylan, I skipped you. Your general non-spoiler thoughts on the day of the Doctor? I, I really enjoyed it. Um, all the interactions between David Tennant and Matt Smith were very good. Um, the whole thing is very well written. Uh, the, the Zygons were were good and very threatening. Uh, yeah, just I I think personally I th- I think this might be my new favorite episode. Ooh, big words, big words. Ian, non spoiler thoughts. I loved it, and upon reflection, I'm not sure if I'm okay with it. Ooh, really? Yeah. All right, we'll get into that. Okay. But you did enjoy it upon watching. Yeah, while watching it, I I was enjoying every second of it. How it ends, it, it, I'm not sure. Part I'm actually kind of glad we're doing this video because there's something I'm going to have to discuss with other people that were like analyzing and thinking about this every second of the video, and not just sitting back watching it for you know entertainment right. to to see if you guys can explain away my pro- my perceived problem with it. I don't know if it's an actual problem yet or not. Okay, I'm... Yeah, if I'm it's used a different type of hair gel, there. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Damn it! All right, hang on. Hang on, guys. Before we jump into it, let me just give my non spoiler thoughts. Um, I completely agree with Ian's thought. This is a wonderfully entertaining episode of Doctor Who. Every single second is just like, oh my god, it's just like... 
it's a wonderful adventure in time and space. Let's just put it that way. It's a incredibly entertaining, wonderfully written, a very warm feeling episode. And it's an anniversary special. I think that's really key for these uh, anniversary thing, things. It's like it's in a familiar universe. You know these characters. You know this universe so well. And it gave off that warm feeling of this is an adventure in this universe, paying homage to this universe. Now, I'm also going to say by the same token, it was a better story than it was an amazing reunion anniversary homage special. Because the story that was told was extremely well told. But when everybody was th theorizing about what the 50th anniversary was going to be and about what it should be, you know, it was... Everyone built it up as this giant event in the Doctor Who universe that was going to fucking change things forever. And it kind of did, which we'll get into, but it was not a game changer. And I think that was something that I was hoping for, but I think I don't think it would have been appropriate, honestly, because, yes, it's the 50th anniversary special. It's a multi-Doctor story. It's a big moment for the universe, but at the same time, as an anniversary special... You've got to wonder if they're not better off for paying homage to the franchise if they do that more warm, familiar feeling, as opposed to cold-hearted, like, we're going to fucking abolish this universe and change it forever. Um, and I, I, I think the, the former of what they did was a smarter move and something that I think I enjoyed a lot more. I love the shit out of it, especially David Tennant was on his fucking A-game. If this is a David Tennant-centric episode it would go down as one of his best performances. And for all the performers, it goes down as one of their best performances. Um, with the possible except, exception of Jenna Louise Coleman, because in retrospective, she doesn't get a ton to do. It's a lot more about the doctors than it is about her. Um, John Hurt did not disappoint me. That dude is an incredible actor, and he got some incredible moments to act. I'm going to say one thing that will bring us into the spoiler talk. Billy Piper felt kind of wasted here. Now, you know, it's built up as a 50th anniversary special. We're going to bring back some old characters, which they do do. And to get one of the first companion of the rebooted series, the first, you know, her actress to come back and do scenes and be in it, you're like, oh, God, where is this going to go? How are they going to pick up her character? They don't even attempt to do that. <laughs> So, with that being said, let's get into spoiler talk. So, I'm going to start immediately with the thing that everybody wanted to talk about. Ian, why don't you talk about the problem you had? All right. Does this contradict the end of time? Oh, See, interesting. This was a question that I originally had as well. And up, uh, the more I think about it, the more it kind of starts to make sense. Um, just it because... makes sense if you don't think about it. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, but... <laughs> <laughs> but if you do think about it, Dylan, why don't you just bring well, up like, the... Let me, let me elaborate on my problem. Yeah, please do. Please all right, do. see... All right, so spoilers for... from this. Well, okay, from this point on, we're going we're gonna to spoil the shit out of it. Let me just put it that, put that, put it that way. Okay. Um, all right, so at, in the end of Day of the Doctor, they save Gallifrey by stopping it in a moment. And they do. Then, and then it's implied that they're going to eventually resurrect Gallifrey sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is end of time shows that the Time Lords were just as bad as the Daleks because they were planning to kill everything in the universe and ascend as these ethereal beings. So well, what we're given, the, the snapshot we're given of the Time Lords in Day of the Doctor is extremely different than what we got in End of Time. I kind of agree. Well, I think I can I... explain that. Okay. okay. I think what it was was Rassilon and the Gallifreyan High Council that wanted to do that, and not everyone was was all for it. They uh, did they... get the High Council. No, 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 no. Let me explain. Let me explain. They went ahead with it despite, you know, you kind of get the sense when Rassilon is talking uh, that he went ahead and did it anyway, you know, right. and without the you know the other people's knowledge. When he got the council behind him, he's like, "That's it. That's what we're gonna do. Fuck everybody else. That's you know, I'm in charge." So that's how I feel like I'm wearing the big pointy hat. I win. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this cool glove that that acts as a Deus Ex Machina. 
Oh my God, me and Dylan had like, was it me, Dylan, was it you and I? We had the best joke about that where he, that wasn't written in, in the original script and Timothy Dalton just walked on set for the end of time and was, just saw I that. Cl- <laughs> what? I think that was you and I, bud. Yeah, oh, I okay, I'm sorry. I talking about it all. Okay, so Ian and I were talking about how that fucking glove looked kind of cheap in the end of time. And I was like, and I, Ian, I think you made the joke of like, no, I think Timothy Dalton just walked on set, grabbed that glove, and was like, this is in the special now. <laughs> and then Russell T. Well, Davies just had to write it into the script. Well, that is a, that's a prop from Torchwood, so you may not be off. <laughs> I, just, I just love the idea of Timothy Dalton walking in and being like, good morning, everybody. Is that, is that the this same? Is, this is, is, is going to be in the show now. To bring people back to life in Torchwood? Yeah, that's the exact same prop. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought it looked familiar. Timothy Dalton just decided to wear it, I guess. This is going to be in the end of time. Just letting everybody know. The end of time is with a cool sort of looking glove. (laughs) And then they didn't didn't, like set it up or anything so it would look okay on film. He just fucking wore it. He refused to take it off. No, no, Dalton thought it was the Infinity Gauntlet. (laughs) Yes, because Timothy... Because in Timothy, Do- in our version of, of the of the Doctor Who universe, Rassilon is a fucking Marvel universe fan. Um, but uh, here here's the thing: they do mention, and Ian, I think you were going to say this. They mention the High Council in this, yeah. and they say how they say how they do. They say they I think they've said they've either disappeared or they're gone. No, no, no. They, they say they abandoned. The High Council's pretty much said fuck them. Right, because these Arcadia, guys, your planet's doomed. Have fun. <laughs> yes, which is clearly like the time, which originally I thought that they were talking about how like, oh, this takes place. So the moment we're looking at takes place after the moment in the end of time, where at this point they're gone, and now it's just the army of, of Gallifrey up against the Daleks. That, what you guys are pointing out, makes more sense to me, because Rassilon is a dick. Oh, um, yes, he's the, he is the biggest asshole in time and space. So... It, it makes a lot of sense to me if it you know, cause, cause here's the thing in the end of time Rassilon is shown as and we only see portions of Gallifrey inside of one general room so you've got to wonder it's like how much is this guy working for his home world rather than working for himself but like and based on that time, though in in end of time Rassilon looks like he's speaking to potentially billions of time lords that's all the high council Yes, and also, Rassilon could be in a room alone and think he's speaking to all of the High Council. <laughs> That's not what we see. <laughs> that, that is the Gallifreyan High Council, and pretty yeah. much right. thousands I mean, it's, of them. It's a big yeah. planet. they got they all the representatives. They've got people to delegate. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm yeah. just saying, the end of time does not imply that it's just the High Council. The end of time implies that it's all Time Lords. Well, my other problem with it is he goes, Gallifrey rises, and I think it would have been... I think it would have worked better... And it's hard to say that because I'm, I'm sure Russell T. Davies wasn't thinking, I wonder what Stephen Moffat's going to do with this show when I'm done. No, Russell um, T. Davies was just going, I need to get some lunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I think it would have worked better in context of Day of the Doctor if he would have gone, the Gallifreyan High Council rises as opposed to Gallifrey rises. Well, again, it seems- he, um, he had no idea to see in the future. And plus, you know, you got to look at it as this is a show that has, you know, time travel all the time. So it's really hard to really pinpoint. There's obviously going to be continuity errors for a yeah. show of 50 years of continuity. So you but have to take that. Big well, error. Hold on, hold on. Even in the current show, they do. They have a little continuity errors here and there, and you can't help that. So it's time travel. It's gonna. The more you think about it, the more you, it's gonna fry your brain. Also, Moffat likes to kind of retcon stuff anyway, so... Yeah, I get that, but that doesn't justify it. The the end of time is a big deal, and you can't just Mm, say... Also, also, Ian, you got to understand, end of time is not a well-loved one all around the board. I love it. (laughs) I I know you do, but a lot of other people... Some people think it's one of the worst of the new series. Uh, Let me put it that way. And Moffat kind of is... Was pro- if 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 this was all in his mind, I don't know. I can't tell you for sure, but he's definitely like he's kind of taken some of the things that people weren't big about the f- first four series and tried to either get rid of them or minimize them. I can tell that. I mean, that's that's oh obvious, but, fuck yeah. But it's a big continuity thing. It's not like a small thing like you know, 
it's not like they say this character died and then they're back or something. It's a big deal. It's the whole point of David Tennant's uh, arc, and, and it surrounds his uh, regeneration. It's, it's everything that led up to Matt Smith's run. It's problematic to just skip over that continuity-wise. The High Council but, thing works. Your explanation hmm. with the High Council thing works, but that's a fan um, explanation thing, I think. Well, that, what you're saying is fan explanate, is a fan explanation. No, it's not. I'm saying that they clearly show that this is... They clearly imply it's supposed to be all-time lords. I'm not crazy in assuming that, am I? Yeah. I mean, there I, are the, I'm there so are the that That's just the High Council, dude. There are the two I don't think the you're council. crazy. I don't think they explain it. So, I, honestly, here's what I'm hearing. It can be interpreted either way because they didn't think about it. So they just said, show a bunch of Gallifreyans and we'll be fine. Or Time Lords. Give them cool armor and tell them to lead things. It'll be great. (laughs) They didn't think about the implications of that. Um, I I think that what's more impressive to me is the continuity stuff that they're able to maintain with this rather giant revelation in the Doctor Who universe. Because... The last, well, what is it, uh, 2005 to 2013, eight years of Doctor Who continuity has been almost entirely predicated on the, t- on the fact that this motherfucker killed his entire race of people. And then this episode comes along and goes, yeah, not really. So in, or- in the fact that they maintain that all that stuff is still valid because he honestly thought he did, that's really impressive to me. So fair enough. I, I can, just I think I, it is a problematic thing for a major continuity event. Um, I mm, I don't I, hate the new. I don't hate Day of the Doctor or anything. I really enjoy it. It's just I find it hard to keep it in place with End of Time because it doesn't quite fit. It it kind of contradicts it just in the way they portray the uh, Time Lords. Well, I will admit. Also, and, and Time I'll, Lords have never been consistently portrayed at all, dude. So you're <laughs> not alone. Um, here's yeah, the other thing, though. We got new series, so... Well, here, here's got an the entire thing. planet of people that are regenerating, they're not going to be consistent. Um, no. Well, I'm just saying, I'm saying in, in the new series, we've seen the extended Time Lords, not counting the Master and whatever the hell um, the Doctor's daughter is, and River Song. We've seen extended Time Lords twice. Um, let, me, um, let, me, let me point this out as well. I'm sorry, uh... I honestly, here's here's where I think we can criticize it objectively. The day of the Doctor, I'm talking about. The whole the whole episode is mainly predicated upon again the incident of the uh, who I'm going to call the ninth Doctor from now on. I'm just going to call him War Doctor because it's less confusing for me. There, okay, fine. We'll, we'll do that for now. But I want to talk about this a little bit later. The war where the War Doctor goes off to some desert world. And is about to blow up, and it is about to do the dirty deed. He is about to blow up all the Time Lords, burn Gallifrey, as he says, and get rid of the Daleks and the Time Lords at the same time, to end this insanity. And based on what we've known of the Time War before this, and how the Doctor has explained it, it is not a terrible act in that fashion. It's seen as a necessary evil. And in the day of the Doctor, I don't think they portray the Time Lords correctly where this seems like this has to be done. And the reason why I say that is because in this episode, the only reason he seems to be doing it is just to get rid of the Daleks. Everything we see of the Time Lords in this that's not the Doctor, they seem like normal, normal patriotic people just trying to defend their home world. There is no deed that they're trying to do that is so insanely evil. They're not trying to be, you know, they're not trying to um, extend the war or anything. Everything we see of them in this contained episode doesn't really incite the feelings of they need to be wiped out along with the Daleks. Well, and, um, allow me to um, try to shed some light on that. Uh, again, maybe, you know, the Doctor leaves a message saying he's done with both sides because they both committed a lot of atrocities. Again, you could, uh, we don't know the extent of the war and how many people were really all for, you know, the conscious thing. Again, that could be just uh, Rassilon and the High Council. And again, it could easily be pretty – it could be easily that a lot of these Gallifreyans didn't deserve it. Or maybe they were all – Well, that's the whole – Yeah, that, yeah. yeah that's the thing. Like maybe all of them didn't deserve it, but the ones that were in power were the ones causing all of this. But we didn't see that. Um, this mostly dealt with the doctor doing a necessary evil. And, you know, say what you will. Let's say you try to commit genocide in your own people. 
and, you know, see how that doesn't affect you. I'm not saying it wouldn't affect me. I'm saying that – no, here, here's my point. My point is that um, what we see of the Time Lord's actions in this episode, to me at least, does not – It doesn't, does not, it doesn't um, imply the action that he takes. Uh, it doesn't right. mesh. It doesn't mesh with what we know already is the problem. Well, the, the, he, problem, he, is, here's, the problem is we're only seeing a little tiny, like not even a slice of this – huge war you know we're, we're just well, seeing and of course yeah. they're the ones whose city's getting blown up so naturally they're going to look a little bit more sympathetic but well, here, if we knew the, the whole story it would be more like oh yeah those time lords they're no they're, totally you know. and and this this is kind of a this is kind of a weird thing to criticize given how this is a 50th anniversary special for a 50 year show here's why i think it's a problem in day of the doctor the way it's written it feels like they're more of a consequence rather than they are a problem like, it's almost like an action movie where the only way the hero can save, can stop the villain is if he shoots his girlfriend as well. And knowing what we know about the universe and about this incident, that's not why he, wipe, he wipes out both sides. He wipes out both sides because they're both doing terrible things. And that's, uh, it's also a problem with tone in what we were seeing leading up to this. Look at the scene in Night of the Doctor. She says, who can yeah. tell the difference anymore when he ta- says, at least I'm not a Dalek? They, they're clearly – there's this clear narrative set out about what the Time Lords had become well, that I, this partially – I'm not going to say ignores, but doesn't show enough of. Yes, it doesn't ignore it, and again, knowing what we know, it works fine. But I feel like for the emotion of this episode and for the true and, – and to enhance the truly magnificent performance that John Hurt is giving off because he's trying to work out whether or not he should do this thing – I think it would help. It would help. It would have helped greatly in order to either just show a fraction of why he thought that he had to wipe out the Time Lords as well as the Daleks. Because um, again, the problem is that in this particular instance, it comes off as more of like the only way I can do this is if I wipe them out too, rather than I need to do both because they're both going to fucking destroy the universe. Um, but um, that being said. I really, really love the structure of this episode and the storytelling that Stephen Moffat does. Yeah. Because the whole purpose of this episode is I'm going to bring these three doctors together as for one particular reason. The, the, big, the big thing of this episode is um, – and let's, do, let's explain the plot briefly so we can talk about it in depth. The war doctor is about to blow up Gallifrey with a weapon called the Moment. And – a the what is it called the uh, the conscience of the moment materializes in the form of Rose Tyler. Yeah, I just I just call it not Rose. Um. Yeah, and we'll, I'll get in, I'll get into that in a minute. And she uh, she appears in the form of Rose Tyler because she thinks that the Doctor will recognize her, which he doesn't because this is before he, this is before season one. And took an image from your past, or is it your future? I get those confused. Yeah, that, that, oh, that was such a great moment. I like that like, because it reminds me of my favorite episode, Doctor's Wife. Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah, that was cool. Um, she had a very TARDIS girl thing going on with that particular episode in terms of her performance. Um, well, I mean, they're both pieces of technology designed by the Time Lords, so I guess it sort of stands yeah, to reason. Oh, that's, they, they that's do the mention the moment like is so advanced that it basically decided to become sentient and. That was such a creepy moment where it's like it decided to become – it evolved to become sentient. I'm like, holy shit, that's kind of creepy. And it kind of explains the – because there, there are certain ticks where it's not acting like a person. It's like repeating no more, no more. Like, like it's fascinated with this new found existence it's created for itself in a way. Right, I love how it's imitating the War Doctor, just like how stern he is. I was like, oh, that's so cool. I just love how much fun Billy Piper's having saying the phrase, no more, different times. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And plus, you know, with also Billy is that we were all, if she plays a character that we were not expecting, you know, when Billy Piper was announced and David Tennant was announced, we were like, oh, it's going to be Series 2 Doctor, or, you know, that Earth 2 Doctor with uh, Rose hanging out with her. And thank God it wasn't that. <laughs> um, yeah. But... But no, it's uh, Billy Piper plays a completely different character from yes. Rose Tyler. She just takes the same likeness, and and with it, I actually you, you guys know that I'm not a big fan of Rose Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Can I can I just state why I think they did this? Actually, is because kind of like what um, Duke was saying earlier about the uh, how the end of time is not very well loved among most fans. 
uh, Rose is somebody who's very polarizing among fans in that a large section of the community just hates her, and the other section loves her. It's weird. There's no like in between. <laughs> but um, there is. She is very polarizing because I'm a lot the of in between because like, I have kind of a mixed reaction to her. And I would her. I would put myself in there as well. I don't hate her. I don't love her. She's by far not my favorite companion. But I I got choked up when she, when her and the doctor got separated. So I, so I think that's kind of why Stephen Moffat was like, don't really want to put Rose in this because it's like, as, mm-hmm. as soon as you put Rose in it, you've got a large section of the uh, of the fandom that's already hating on it. <laughs> I, Just, I also have one other thing, and this is something I, I wanted to bring up because I kind of realized this when I was watching it for the first time. Then I went to kind of, I kind of looked at uh, at least the people I follow on Twitter and saw what they thought of it, and I'm very much convinced that uh, the War Doctor's part, most of his stuff, was written before Eccleston said no, because he basically acts like the Ninth Doctor. He's very, yeah, very serious, but he's also really sassy towards the other two. And they paired him up with Rose. I, I'm convinced he had that whole idea to make Rose an, an avatar for the, the moment. But I think he chose Rose specifically because at the before, you know, he said, oh, you, I can't use um, Chris. That yeah, I'll, I mean, pair, I'll pair that one up with Chris so he can see but, what his near future is going to be like. And then, be right, but it would, be, it would be the same lines, right? Because Basically, at that point, a lot yeah, of stuff he, he wouldn't says have could come out of Eccleston's mouth and you don't have to change a thing. Yeah, I mean, the only thing you'd have to change is John Hurt's a little bit... It's weird, because, you know, the War Doctor is supposed to be this stern fucking soldier, and he's pretty lighthearted, and I dug it. I was like, even, you can't even change under... the Doctor that much. No, oh, yeah, no, I know. And I, I, was, I was happy at that. I was like, yeah. even under all that grit and anger, he's still the Doctor. And I thought that was so fucking cool. Um, I love the moment... I love when he shows up in... Uh, we're in Elizabeth the first times with the, with the other two doctors, and he's like, "Gentlemen, I'm looking for the doctor." And he thinks that these are, and, they, and he thinks they're his companions. I, I know, that it was, was like, fucking genius. Like, oh god, he is. He's basically the doctor. He <laughs> is. I mean, of the doctor would say that to himself. Yeah, it almost yes. like when that scene happens where he meets ten and eleven. It almost feels like the scene from Three Doctors where Hartnell sees Pertwee and Troughton for the first time. He's like, "Oh, you're my replacements." A dandy and a clown. A clown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just like, and then when he's, and then when he says, "Oh, and you especially," he starts looking at Smith. I'm like, "Oh, that's funny," because Smith is, I, Smith is the youngest doctor, correct? Yeah. Okay, I wanted to make sure I got that right. Knowing that, I was like, "That is fucking funny." Yeah. Um, and and also how they kept calling David Tennant sneakers sand shoes. They're not sand shoes. Yes, they are. I love, I love that he was so defensive. <laughs> yes, because he's the only one not wearing fucking dress shoes or, like, combat gear. He's wearing these, like, fucking sketch... Oh, no, what are they? A Converse? Converse. Yeah. He's wearing, like, and it, tailors. Yeah, exactly. And, oh, this... The one... The other big thing that got right in this episode, just fucking spectacular, the interaction between the three Doctors was awesome. Spectacular stuff. Especially Smith and Tennant, because... Those two just have this amazing connection of just, like, they're both two of the most fun-loving, fun-loving doctors, but they both got great dark sides. And when they come into conflict later in the episode, it's really effective. And when it comes out, that argument that they have, when, because at the the beginning of this episode, um, John Hurt, is it John Hurt or Billy Piper who asks how many children are on Gallifrey right now? Uh, I think it was Piper, yeah. Okay. And then John Hurt says, I, I, I take time to calculate, and she goes, you'll have time later to calculate that. And then one of the first things he asks his, his two future incarnations is, how many children were on Gallifrey when we burned it? And Smith just goes, oh, Jesus, I forgot. And Tennant just goes, what do you mean you forgot? I, I this like is the exact that. number. More, more so yeah. than that, I actually like the look Tennant gave Smith before he said that line. Yeah, because like, yeah. that's you, something I've always. I've, Bill and I have had conversations about this. I don't. I, I have no problem with Matt Smith's doctor. I love Matt Smith's doctor. He's awesome. I've always thought though that his portrayal of the doctor, the way he's written, would have made more sense to, to occur between Eccleston and Tennant, because there's a very sharp um, change in character 
and and motivations and such between Tennant and Smith. And I do not think that those two guys would get along that well. And that you know they did they did better than I would have expected, but there was that very very combative um, fundamental difference between the two of them. Um, Smith is Smith's doctor is always looking to move on to the next best thing, whereas Tennant's had that, but he was much more of a, it, it for him. It's hard to say. He was a lot more regretful and mournful than Smith's doctor was. Yeah. And not to say that Smith doesn't have his moments of where he just breaks down and is like, you know, he's very depressed. Like, again, I mean, he lost two of his favorite companions last season. Yeah, so. his, uh, his, uh, his, his uh, father and mother-in-law. And, right? Uh, and his wife last episode. So I mean, he's got, like, the ultimate version of Batman Syndrome. His planet is... Oh, okay. God! <laughs> the, 11th, the 11th Doctor is... The Eleventh Doctor is Batman as a Time Lord. Let's just put it that way. Um, he's kind of—he's kind of like a. <laughs> my planet is You're dead. <laughs> You're my impossible girl. <laughs> <laughs> he calls you. Um, where's Gordon? <laughs> where's you mean my... Alistair? You mean Lethbridge? You mean Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart? Yeah, yeah, that guy. He died. Crap. <laughs> Bring him back from the dead. Dent, can we trust him? <laughs> I'm, I'm Bat Doc. <laughs> Bat Doc? Oh, God. That sounds a like a veteran will stop you. <laughs> he has one of those in fucking the Arkham games, so it makes sense. Oh, did you guys see the um, the build up that, uh, uh, that how that should have ended, uh, the YouTube channel did? They did uh, how Doomsday should have ended, and they did, did the Doctor in the Superhero Cafe. That was fun. And. And the doctor is like, no, but I have a sonic screwdriver, and I bet you'd love to have one. <laughs> oh, no, I'd call it a bat screwdriver. What would a bat do with a screwdriver? <laughs> Actually, that brings me back to one of my another favorite line from Day of the Doctor, where, because one thing about the, the modern ones was they always seem to just pull out their screwdriver like it's a goddamn laser beam. Right? And then, and then, and then War Doctor's just like, what are you going to do, build a cabinet? <laughs> which is so which is funny. funny. Like that that goes back to what you were talking about earlier with this whole like he was just written as the ninth doctor because that's a callback to um yep, that is a call. What that is it? was like the are you my mother empty child yeah, yeah that child. was the hint that got to me yeah, yeah. you know what's it's, have you been bored have some cabinets to put up you, you know what's going to be that that line asserted Eccleston as my favorite doctor. Um, you know what's going to be interesting now that we have John Hurt's performance to look at? It's going to be interesting going back and rewatching season one because now it's the story of how John Hurt turned into David Tennant um, and Christopher Eccleston is just the intermediate. Yeah, more or less. That's kind of true. Um, well, because here's the thing. It's always been implied that the Doctor regenerated in the midst of the Time War, which is not – which now that we have – now that we finally have all of the Doctor's actual regenerations – um, we know that that's not really what happened, but he wouldn't know that based on what he would remember, so it, it makes sense. By the, By the way, way Bill, guys, that's not true. We never we saw did. two turn of the three. Oh, yeah. well, yes and no, I guess. We don't, yeah. no, uh, not at all. Not that was a weird situation, anyway. They we didn't have the actor cast, so they couldn't show him. Well, we didn't well, see it actually happen, but we do see, like, the before and after kind of thing. Right, well, we, and, we see... And the, even then, that's a little muddy because uh, because of some continuity errors that come up later where the second Doctor shows up and he mentions, oh, I remember that from the War Games, that story where I regenerated and my companions wouldn't know things. That opened a giant thing where they're thinking, oh, before, like, at the end of his last story, they didn't regenerate him instantly. They made him do a bunch of side missions. <laughs> it's like fucking Batman Arkham War, Arkham uh, Arkham City, um, more or less. And they they, they, yeah. they did that. So I, I know that has nothing to do with our actual conversation, but I just right. But I'm I'm just saying. Well, in that case, we saw the incident that incited it. Yeah. We saw what, what the time was yeah. supposed to incite. The, the time lords got angry at him. Right. Exactly. Yeah. In 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 the new series, it was like we had McGann, and now we have Eccleston. Deal with it. Yeah. And it's always been thought of by fans that, oh, he was in a battle in the middle of the Time War. He regenerated oh, after he getting was, shot or oh, He was just, you know, getting the, his tires fixed on his car, and the guy didn't put the lug nut in, and it was a terrible crash. And... <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Paul McGann, during the midst of the Time War, got a toothache, and unfortunately, <laughs> the guy wasn't yeah. paying attention. And he met that dentist from Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> Fucking Steve Martin. 
being a dentist. Shut up, Bill. Yeah. Which is hilarious. I will not it's shut up. The original, that's put the, the guy, like, there's a guy who gets his teeth mangled up after the dentist dies. <laughs> and it's played by Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can you imagine this? Paul McGill was like, I had to regenerate in order to get rid of a serious toothache. <laughs> Doctor couldn't take it out, and it said it couldn't even get root canal, so I had to just get a regeneration. But Doctor, you've only got 12 regenerations. Oh, I'm going to write myself out of that later. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, these two sisters who give me a bonus regeneration in the form of... Well, okay. All right. Perfect time to bring this up. Do we have to renumber the Doctors? No. I don't think so because they went to... Here's the reason, and I'm going to use old continuity to try and justify this here. Okay. Now, we're going to bring up Night of the Doctor. He lands on Karn and meets the, 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 sister of the, the Sisters of the Flame. They go back all the way to a fourth Doctor adventure called The Brain of Morbius. Where, and there's a very sort of known scene to classic fans where uh, they attach the fourth Doctor to this machine and they start show, they show Tom Baker, John Pertwee, Patrick Troughton, William Hartnell, and then they start showing more people. And this was before they were settled on, oh yeah, he's only had four lives, like they've they were kind of vague as to if there were lives before William Hartnell. And a lot of people like in books and audio dramas have kind of played with the idea that, um, and I can actually bringing up uh, the second doctor last story is a good point too, because at the end of that, they let him actually choose the face he can turn into. Yeah. He doesn't choose any of them. Of course. He's too ugly. He's too ugly. He's too young. Yeah, exactly. And so, the way they were thinking, because a lot of people were, were um, really questioning Night of the Doctor, well, people who just knew the new series because they weren't sure how, they just thought, oh, regener- regeneration is completely random. The Sisterhood have mentioned before that they have really, really good handle on Time Lord Science. And also it's been said before that you can more or less just get a whole new set of regenerations or an extra one, an extra one like you're in a video game. Oh, so, okay. Oh, no, because the master has done that. So. The doctor after picks up a power up. Yeah. How <laughs> the doctor eats a mushroom? The doctor gets a mushroom and turns it to another British actor. Um, <laughs> no, no, the way I look at it now, after she, at first I was thinking this was some sort of because there's also a character called the Valyard who was this. Uh, Right, who they tease you with in the name of the Doctor because yeah. they call the Doctor the Valyard. I'm like, oh shit, that's who John Hurt is. I was thinking like, that too. I was not. thinking that too. But when we saw out of the Doctor, I was thinking he was some sort of because he gives her the name of the Doctor. So I'm thinking this is some sort of extra regeneration that just doesn't right. count in the full lineup. Right, because he's not officially the Doctor, which is for the further you know said in this episode because he says, "Don't call me that." Yeah, exactly. So, like, I'm looking at this as just some sort of side phase that technically isn't a part of his natural biology that he did to himself where he right. more or less tried to change himself into a completely different person yeah. right and, and i mean i think the other justification for that is he had to have an external force given to him in order to have that regeneration happen exactly so it's almost like getting extra energy here's the here's where it started to make me question and uh, duke this is something me and you brought up in our little pms before we started recording Peter Capaldi makes a cameo in this episode. That was cool. His eyes, his scary ass eyes. His fucking terrifying ass yeah, eyes. Yeah, the top half of his, like from the bottom of his eyes to his forehead, that gets a cameo here. Um, and his hand. Don't forget his hand. Don't forget his hand. Oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah, the hand <laughs> thing. Uh, Which is why I was surprised by the Tom Baker cameo because I'm like, oh wait, they're gonna show Capaldi. What? Well, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. We'll get, yeah, we'll because get I have Tom a Baker serious question second. concerning Tom Baker as well. But We'll get to Tom Baker in a second. Let's focus on Capaldi. Here's why that scene made me question whether or not we can count the War Doctor as the Ninth Doctor. When the Time Lords realize that all of the Doctor's incarnations are there, they say, all 13 of them. And I was like, so they are counting John Hurt as the Ninth Doctor if they're saying all 13. Well, I think they're just counting you all 13. You can think of it that lot. way. Personally, I'm just thinking that because there were 13 things there present. Yeah. Yeah, but well, but they're saying well, I mean, that all of the Doctor is there. So John Hurt if, introduces if we're to assume himself. that John Hurt, well, yeah, well, yeah, John, John Hurt introduces one of those himself where to it, them it, as the Doctor. It's kind of to your own interpretation, I feel. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, well, as they go on, we'll see what they do with it. So, because if Capaldi is truly the thirteenth Doctor, they're gonna they're gonna have to be like, oh, I got some extra lives back when I you know fucked River or something. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> that is exactly what the line is going to be. <laughs> and it's going to be the creepy coming out of push for it, and then they're going to have to be like dub it over really badly. someday, in, someday in the future, Bill's going to get the job of writer for Doctor Who, and that's just that's oh, what it's going to turn into. You guys don't want to see what no, I was do that with one Doctor time. Who. Me and River went on a beach and had a picnic. <laughs> like it's going to look really bad. <laughs> it's just, he's doing really up. obscene hand gestures. You know what he's <laughs> actually saying, but it's just oh, it's a shitty just a... dub where Capaldi sounds bored. <laughs> And he's and just, <laughs> Capaldi's just screaming at the top of his lungs in the video. It's like, and then I run it right up our ass. And, oh, God. Um, that being said, before we get back to Capaldi, <laughs> fucking the line, the line where uh, John Hurt was like, can you say anything without shaking your hands about? And the ele- Eleven was just like, of course. No, not really. Oh, and he no. just keeps shaking his hands. Oh, God, I thought that was it. Because I always love it when the doctors point out the differences between themselves, and that's something that Smith has defined mm-hmm. with his doctors. So I was like, that's, that's like, nice that they point out. Let me ask you this, Bill. Since you're such a ninth Doctor fan, how did you feel about the way they cameoed Eccleston in this? Um, I wish they would have gone a little farther with the CG, because we really only feel like the right hand of his face. Well, no, no, I'm so, not just I that. Like, I think he's talking about the stock footage is. during the... Uh, during the 13th Oh, artist. when he goes, I've got a little trick up my sleeve. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. I don't even the remember. The scene that made his career. <laughs> right, it wasn't the fantastic. I mean, I, re- I knew, I was like, oh, that's Eccleston. Um, I mean, I thought it was fine. I didn't expect, I didn't even expect them to have all 11 doctors pre- uh, or 13, rather, 13 doctors present because... All 75 and a half. <laughs> right. Um, and my first thought was, where the fuck's Peter Cushing? Oh, we don't yeah, talk I'm about sure. him. I'm sure he that's doesn't what it count is. at all, dude. <laughs> I'm, no, I, no, I know. I'm kidding. I um, Bill, by that logic, where's the uh, Asian guy from King Kong Escapes? I want him in. Uh, where yes, is Owen where, Jackson, Hugh Grant. Where is <laughs> Doctor? I just want. <laughs> Thank you, Duke. Thank you. I appreciated that joke. I just, I just want fucking. Not the, the I'm not the biggest guy. fan of, of Curse of Fatal Death, but Hugh Grant's cameo always makes me die. <laughs> Listen, I just, I just want, I just want the Asian, the Asian villain from King Kong Escapes to get his due and be considered a true doctor. So we'll discuss his place in the timeline later. Who's part of the giant robot space gorilla. from Community? Damn it! <laughs> oh, oh God, Mechanic Kong is his TARDIS. Yeah, Mechanic Kong. <laughs> See, here's like he wears a costume that looks just like Hartnell, so I'm like, how is he not? Like, they had to at least be thinking that. Um, anyway, so back to uh, whether or not John Hurt is considered a doctor. I, that's how I interpreted that scene. Again, only time will tell who's right. Uh, um, my thing, I'm going to go with a no, because I'm going to agree with Duke here on this one, is that it's just, a, it's just another, it's an extra life that he, did, he got through unnatural means, more or less. And his body was kind of, you know, it was kind of wearing down, and plus it was kind of irregular, so then it went back, and plus he didn't call himself the Doctor, so to him, it wasn't a true regeneration, and plus they could... The Doctor himself is like, no, 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 I don't count. (laughs) He's like, no, this wasn't a real regeneration, he's like debating this. Well, as he he states when they're in the museum, he only gets to actually be the Doctor for a minute, for like a moment, and then... (laughs) No, 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 here's the best part, he's debating with a reflection of himself. (laughs) <laughs> not even like of a mirror he, he was just walking by like a really shiny wall <laughs> and just decided <laughs> like, I need to argue with you you are my worst yes. enemy well here's oh yeah that's, that's true and that's brought up a lot uh, here's the thing I love the scene where he's talking to Clara through the time rip which by the way great reference to the five doctors Um, and uh, he, uh, she's like who are you talking to myself um, I thought that was genius. Uh, what did you guys think of the, uh, the, the, the fact that they brought in the little, like, ghost-whirling sheet from the five doctors in the day of the doctor? I, I thought it was nice. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just thought it was a, cl- well, I thought first it was like off, a good- first off, Bill, the thing about it is, um, that sheet, um, it, because it, it, you're thinking of, because they did, like, a special edition of the five doctors in 95, yeah. The original effect, it as you know, broadcast in 1983, just looks like a bargain bin basement d- version of the uh, uh, Phantom Zone. It's just like this weird looking triangle that flips towards them and then traps them, like it kind of looks like the Phantom Zone. It's <laughs> honestly so... more hilarious, and it's my favorite. <laughs> right. Well, I just thought that's what they were making reference to. Maybe I was wrong. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. 
<clears throat> Ian, you haven't given your thoughts. What do you think of this war doctor, whether or not he's an actual doctor situation? I mean, it, it depends on, I guess, your definition of a doctor. Um, like, I, Laura, from a biological standpoint, uh, uh, t- uh, Time Lord is the same Time Lord every time he regenerates, yes. From, but from what Matt Smith says in uh, Name of the Doctor, where the name you take is a promise, and so he's not the doctor, but he's part of the same person. Um, I guess I'd count him as one uh, because he does redeem himself uh, by the end of this. So I say he's Doctor 8.5. I agree. Uh, and again, I think that time will tell whether or not there is... Like, it's, it's, it's all, it all depends on what's going to happen with Capaldi. I think that's and, the big thing. And, and, um, and, then a, and then Richard E. Grant shows up out of nowhere. He <laughs> yells, I was the Doctor for five seconds in an animation that no one remembers. Wait, what are you talking about? Um, before the show came back in 2003... They were considering bringing the show back as an animated web series, and oh, Richard E. Grant played the Doctor in that. And Derek Jacobi played the Master. Yes. Yeah. What? Oh, that cameo. really? Yeah. Wait, hey, I must learn more about this. So, it's, Richard it's called, E. Grant was it's the called doctor. Scream of the Shelka. Um, I actually they put it out on DVD recently, and I have it. Um, it was basically made like literally, it was made. And put out, like, the, it was, like, done in a serial. And it was literally put out, like, two weeks before they announced, oh, by the way, we're bringing the show back, so this is completely irrelevant now. Right. It's, it, it, it was, it, it, it's just, and plus it was the internet in 2003, which, compared to what it is at the moment right now, it's smaller. Because, you know, there wasn't YouTube, there wasn't so, there was, Social media wasn't as rampant as it is now, so it just, no right. one, not a lot of people knew about it. It was very. I this is the first I heard of it. So. Oh, trust me, you're not the first, and you're not going to be the last. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, that's, that's it, it's a fascinating stuff. thing that I'm actually going to cover when I get 50 days of who back up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny because, yet, like I said, uh, Derek Jacoby's the master. Richard E. Grant goes from the Doctor to playing the Great Intelligence, and then there's a lot of have... parallels to the modern series. Yeah, Dave, what, who did David Dennett play? Like a companion? No, he just played some guard that had one line. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Actually, um, the, the companion was played by uh, the actress who plays Liz Ten. Oh, wow, okay. Um, huh. So, <clears throat> well, since Dylan, you brought it up earlier, I think we're going to go back to it now. Let's talk about the biggest moment in the day of the doctor. That horse turning into a Zygon. I let's know, talk that about the horse me. turning into the Zygon. Um or let's talk about the let's talk about the lie that they were I thought they were gonna bring up the weeping angels in this episode. Um there was a moment where I was like, oh my god, the angels are in this where they're talking about how um the angel uh the statues are all disintegrated. Well, that's why there's stone all over the ground. And I thought and then they said that's because somebody had to replace the statues. I was like, oh my god, they're going to bring up the angels. And then they're like, no, it's just the Zygons disguised as statues. And I was like, damn it! They well, that's the, the thing about those Zygons. Me. That's the thing about those Zygons. They're shapeshifters. You never know where they're at. I still don't trust that rabbit. Um. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh, that was um, really actually wanna... most... No, can, can I talk about that, too? I love the part that not only does he give this speech, not only does he stop himself, the dramatic music just drops... <laughs> yes, and he actually calls himself the oncoming storm. Oh, it was so cool. He's yeah. threatening this rabbit um, with its life. Do you guys want to? Do you guys want to talk about the, uh, the Zygon since we're talking about him, kind of mentioning him now? Hang on, let's let's go. I just want to bring up Dylan's thing because while it's still on our minds, let's talk. Let's let's talk about Tom Baker now, just because it's on our minds and shit. Here's my that question. was amazing. Here's my question about Tom Baker: Is he supposed to be? Because this is this is what I sort of gleaned from it. Is he supposed to be the Doctor from the future? Yeah, that's how I that's saw it. a good question. Because and nobody knows. This, because there's this lot. Because you know, Matt Smith has this little thing where I should retire and be the curator of this place. And then Tom Baker's like, yeah, you know, I think you might. Up. And then he's like, oh, I recognize your face. Oh, yeah, well, maybe one day you'll revisit some old faces. And so it's like, I, from what I took it is that somehow in the future, the Doctor is going to get back his Tom Baker face only with like a lot more Krispy Kreme on the gut. And then... Become the curator yeah. of this museum. Yeah, um, become nuts. Also, Bill, uh, Bill, this is something I wanted to bring up because this is something I thought about because we talked about James Bond, and reason being is because that 
what Tom Baker played is kind of like what Roger Moore was supposed to play in Skyfall. You know, have that fun no, little cameo. Sean Connery. Oh, Sean. I, you said it was Moore. If I did, I was. Turns out it was actually just. I can't even say that. Because then they replaced him with an actor. If I did, I was wrong. Because then they replaced him with some other guy that's like carbon copy Sean Connery. (laughs) No, here's the problem. It's like, okay, they didn't. They decided not to do Sean Connery, and then it's like, oh, we we don't want to rewrite the scripts. Everyone's gonna think it's these. It's this giant reveal, and it's like, hi, random Scottish guy. Um, I still have a shotgun. Yeah, well, yeah that, exactly. Well, that's what it felt like. Um, that's the Tom Baker felt like. Like that was what that's it was supposed I, to be in Skyfall. It's like that's that's what I thought as well. I thought he wasn't supposed to be the yeah, Doctor. I, I knew was, from the past I, and simultaneously your future. And I just actually, thought I just thought it was supposed to be like a cute reference. I yeah. actually thought who was going to be an old guy curating the the museum. I literally thought it was going to be Ian Chesterton, uh, one of his first companions. Oh my God! I'm now angry. That's not happening. Damn you, Tyler. Because the thing is, like, the actor's still alive, and it's like, oh, it's an old guy from his past. Oh, like, the actor had a cameo in an Adventure in Time and Space. Yeah, but I was thinking, like, oh, maybe he's a, a, the curator now, it's like, you know, um, taking care of all this stuff. And that would have been a cool little reference, because I thought they were going to harken all the way back to Hartnell. I thought it was going to be Capaldi, because um, we see his face briefly, and then Clara's like, oh, by the oh, no, the, the chick who was wearing Tom Baker's scarf. Was like, oh, by the way, the curate, the old man curating the place wants to see you, and I was like, oh god, it's gonna he be. He wants difficult. my scarf back. And earlier, <laughs> earlier on in the episode, earlier on in the episode, you know, Matt Smith is explaining to uh, Clara that when he was the third Doctor, he actually had a job, like he stayed on Earth and was working for a unit. And so later on, yeah. when he's given that speech about how he should become the curator of this museum, I'm thinking, is Capaldi gonna be a museum curator <laughs> and yeah, like, go on adventures? First doctor Who ever. <laughs> Oh, God, if Capaldi was just like, I'm not going to save time and space, I'm going to curate an Earth museum. Except for that one time, I'm going to go with my other 13 selves and pull a lever one time. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He looked at his date book and said, oh, look, it's my 5 o'clock pulling a lever to help my flash selves. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, oh damn, i got to return that movie to Blockbuster in 1997. <laughs> He wasn't even wearing pants when he went to the fucking That's why he didn't see his face. He wasn't wearing anything. <laughs> he was just wearing, like, you know boxers and an has, I like, Love Donuts t-shirt. You know how every doctor has their, like, their signature outfit? Capaldi's just to be new. Just fuck-ass new. He's <laughs> He's very progressive um, here on Doctor Who. Where... Yeah, the 12th Doctor's a total nudist. <laughs> He's wearing hapless jackets. <laughs> the, all the, of the his Dalek, enemies want... The Daleks see him, they're all looking down. What is that? Every time he pulls I know, out, you're impressed, aren't you? <laughs> every, time he pulls out, every time he pulls out his sonic screwdriver, there's there's a scene just like that that thing with uh, Jack Harkness back in season one, where it's like, where were you keeping that? <laughs> oh, you don't want to know, dear son. I need to figure um, out a new place to put it. That's one thing. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but no, oh, no. Like, we're finally going to find out how big the Doctor's dick is. Here on Doctor Who. Because that is oh, the, you've been waiting for years. all of us. That's all I've been waiting for for all these for all these years and all these months being a Doctor Who fan. I was like the one guy who so was like was, was watching the name of the Doctor. He said, "Screw that! There's something else that's far more important." There's another secret. Um, <laughs> I want to know of the Doctor. I want to know what's going on underneath those those pants, uh, underneath those suspenders. Um, um, but no, like um, <laughs> getting back to the Tom Baker thing. I <laughs> it's his dick. To focus on Tom Baker and not his penis. Um, <laughs> um Well <laughs> Well my thing my thing with it is I really enjoyed it. It was just a fun scene. It was cool. Oh uh, yeah. It was really hard it was actually kind of it was just a sweet moment and he, uh, yeah, you could argue what incarnation he is because they clearly say that. Not in like out front, but you get you get the sense of what it is. And it's just a lot of fun. It, it and even like in ba- Tom Baker's eyes, you can kind of see him like choking up. Well, I mean, I think the thing is that they're probably never going to explain it. Yeah. Because no. it's like I don't really think we need to explain it. No, it's one of those. It's one of those things where it's like I may be, I may not be. I mean, clearly so, he's supposed to be something. I mean, Matt Smith winks at him at one point. I mean, so I mean, I love the part. Do you know what I best, the best part of that conversation is when he's like, "You might be me," and he shakes his head and says, "Congratulations." Yes, and oh god, that was so funny. Um, yeah, that was that was really funny. Um, 
I just thought it was a cute moment. It's it's one of those things like we mentioned earlier. If you think you, if you think too hard about it, it's gonna fall apart. Oh yeah. Um, but I think that <clears throat> it's more or less supposed to be. Here's a guy who knows who, who's really familiar. Who's um <clears throat> he's really important in this universe. We're gonna bring him in. He's gonna give the doctor some direction, give some comfort to him and the audience. And then the doctor is going to have an optimistic, optimistic ending. Now the awkward thing is that we see Tom Baker after this in that little shot, so it's a little oh, bit weird. Shot. That was really. Oh God, it's fantastic. From, from the back, it's awesome. From the front, it's a little funny. Well, well I know mean, they had to work really hard to make these look like they're not Photoshop, and it didn't one hundred percent succeed. But I think it's fine. I mean, it's it, here's the thing. You see. Uh, John Hurt, David Tennant, and Matt Smith all move their faces. Everyone else is like, it's like fucking like a snapshot, well, like a thing I love, cheesy I'm 90s at that picture movie. Right like, yeah! Now. I'm looking at the picture right now. All of them but nine are looking in the same direction. <laughs> Nine's <laughs> like, looking hey. off to the corner. And Nine's like, no, like I... a really cool, it's like, hey guys, look at that moon, huh? <laughs> Nine's like going against what Matt Smith's saying. He's like, no, I don't want to go home. Well, like it's really okay. That's that not true. I'm looking at I'm looking well, at the ones like on the far side. They're looking at different directions, but it's because they're on the far side. He's right next to Tennant. He's it's just off. Like I'm looking at you. Like I'm she's looking, at looking you. in Tennant's ear, just like Ooh, what, what I what I like about it is it's a way it's they're playing around with integrating the past doctors in a way that's not just stock footage. Yeah, um, yeah, right. Which I mean, we got a little bit of that in Name of the Doctor, where you had Clara interacting with stock footage. <laughs> uh, they did a terrible well, then, my, my, that, the part I love to make fun of in that, and I like Name of the Doctor, don't get me wrong, is that part where we see where we see she's in that pit where she sees all the past ones run around. I like to joke that a convention got nuked, <laughs> and it's just a bunch of cosplayers running for their lives. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks like that, right? Oh, God, save the cat girls. <laughs> the stormtroopers died, of course. What are we going to do? Actually, like if, dude, like if Comic Con got new, pretty sure that's, that's what's one what's thing I wanted to bring up real quick, if you don't mind, Bill. Sure, go ahead. How Star Warsy was that Time War footage? It was very Star Warsy. Here's the thing. The Dalek ship. For flying. the months, I have been obsessed with Doctor Who, and, I, and here's the thing I like to point out: I am the newest Doctor Who fan in this group, um, and it's very, very quickly be, become one of my biggest fandoms. Um, but here's the thing. My whole thought process through these months of being a Doctor Who fan, thinking about the Time War, was the Time Lords are a very weird alien society that fights, that, you know, that, that's outside of time as a weird society. The TARDIS technology is bizarre. They almost have this weird ab- abstract technology. And then I'm like, how did they fight in a war? And then my thing was like, and then in the end of the time, you see like a gap. Pistol. Here's the thing. You're like, in the end of time, you see a Gatling gun, and then I was like, they just fought with Gatling guns? And in this, it's like, they're fighting with laser cannons. And I was like, all right. The problem with, yeah, I know. The problem I know, but I was like, that's a little of, bit like, the problem with what you were laser thinking, cannons? The problem with what you were thinking of, Bill, I'll, I'll call it abstract warfare, is that it would be pretty hard to film. <laughs> you know, I know, I know, I know. Because the thing is, and they, I mean, they do mention, they will be fighting with time weapons, because these are two societies that exist outside of time. So, it, you know, I get it. But at the same time, I'm like, this is not what I expected. I mean, it's awesome. It's beautiful. I was it looks expecting be- to fight them with mind powers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just expecting Rassilon and the Emperor, the Dalek Emperor just, just to be staring at each other just like, I just wiped out 500 of your men. <laughs> Deal with that. Oh, and all oh, I that was doing been... was thinking of a Sudoku puzzle. It would have been a great reference if they had showed the Time Lord, uh, not the Time Lord, the uh, Dalek Emperor in this. Yeah. Or Davros. Oh, that was a, just like or Davros. Just like up yeah. on a ship, like commanding something or whatever. Like we could have took a second away from David Tennant making out with Queen Elizabeth for that. I mean, come on. My my thing. All right, here's uh, something I want to bring up about the Time War itself. That was very cool. Uh, one thing I was kind of hoping for, but then again, I thought about it more. I was like, I don't want to see it. My imagination can play better with it is, you know, the stuff Tenet listed off at the final days of the war, the Horde of Travesties, the Nightmare Child. I want to know, know what the Nightmare Child is. My brought thing, up constantly in season four, and they're like, yeah, the Nightmare never gonna Child, show. he will because cause you to scream, and you will never sleep again, and it's just like, it's just like a clone that, of Macaulay Culkin. 
No, it's that baby from those commercials <laughs> playing during Game of the, Game of the Doctor. Don't, or Day don't of the Doctor. eat my mac and cheese. It's the little baby's ice cream. Oh, no, 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 no. Not, not the one from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the one from the Day of the Doctor where it's that giant baby in the Allstate commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that baby does sort of terrify me. Yeah, because it's like, what the fuck is this thing? Well, it's supposed this to be a monstrosity. Well, and the thing I love is I, I was complaining about it once, and my friend, thinking I was a moron, was like, don't you get it? It's a metaphor because his car is like a baby to him. And I'm just like, no, I get the metaphor. It's still a horrifying thing to look at. <laughs> oh. What Duke was referring to is something even more horrifying. During Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they would play this mac and cheese commercial where these, like, middle-aged women would be sitting in the living room eating mac and cheese, and one of, them, one of the women's kid comes downstairs and goes, Hello, mother. Are you eating my mac and cheese? I thought you were having book club. Prepare to die. <laughs> It's horrifying. My name, my name is Inigo Montoya. You eat my cheese. Prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> it was so horrifying because this kid... And the thing that horrified me was like, I'm going to write a book called Mother's Betrayal, and it's going to be an autobiography. And I was like, that's fucking serial killer shit. Uh, oh, do you guys remember the, the, the Young Bates family? What's happening? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got well, one. Do you guys remember... Do you guys remember... Do you, go ahead. Do you guys remember a commercial from Egg from Eggo Waffles back in like the early two thousands, where this bit, where this boy's trying to steal his sister's Eggo Waffles, and then suddenly her face mutates into this giant deformed face, and it goes, "Get away from my Eggos!" I don't remember that, um, but that's also. I have horrible. a feeling I don't want to remember that. <laughs> Your mind blocked it out intentionally. Yeah, knowing me, yeah. Um, but no, getting back to what I was saying, I think. At first, I was like, I wanted to see that, but then again, then I thought about it more, and I was like, oh, my imagination can make it so much cooler. And you know, from what we saw of the Time War, it was really awesome. Those those uh, artillery Daleks, as I like to call them. Oh God, that was badass. Um, also, you know, the the fight itself, and this, and my dad, who was watching it with me, um, who's not the biggest Doctor Who. I mean, he loves Eccleston's run, but uh, he 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 was watching it. I was like, huh? He was like, huh? This is some pretty good effects for uh, for a TV special, and uh, I I always give him the I'm always being a smart ass to him because he's such a trekkie. I I I, gave, I looked at him and was like, yeah, 50th anniversary on day of Doctor Who. Uh, no Star Trek, right? Uh, let's lo- let's look at this TV guide real quick. No, I was uh, <laughs> my smart ass. You're such a heartless bastard. Well, he he, oh, was, he well, was. It looks like I wonder what BBC America. Maybe they're rerunning some TNG. Oh, look, Doctor Who, Doctor Who, Doctor Who, Doctor Who. Uh, Where's Rand Star Norton Trek show, now, Doctor Dad? Who, Doctor Who. Well, here's the thing. He was busted. No, 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 no. I felt justified because he was collectively busting my balls all week for it because of it. Yeah. Uh, Where's Star Trek now, Dad? <laughs> yeah, and again, it's he your loves Star Trek now. Fine. He starts crying. Oh, no, no, the thing that broke... I don't know! The thing that broke him... The thing that broke him, he was like, God... He actually said, God damn it, was when he saw William Shatner saying, Happy happy 50th anniversary, Dr. Who. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, damn it. And then he saw... Um, did he do one, it in the style of Rocket Man? Please tell me he did it in the style of Rocket Man. Happy birthday to you... Doctor Who, and then he's just like doing a weird, awkward dance. And, and then they had um, Zoe Saldana and the original actress of Uhura on there as well. Yeah, and I saw her, and I was like, Nichelle. Yeah, and they, and then he that just that just broke him down even further. Like he had he knew he lost. Yeah. Um, um, but no, getting... um, my favorite was like we see fucking uh, Richard Dreyfus, and I was like, where's where's his potato mountain? Yeah, <laughs> and I was like Nathan Fillion. Yeah, um, Could they find um, these people. Um, yeah, they cut them off the streets. But getting back to like, um, here's a cool. They reference. pull the they pull the Colin Baker and lock the doors. <laughs> <laughs> um, but say happy birthday to Doctor Who, damn it! Um, but, all right. Half but, of them were like, "What, what is, is that? this? What is this Doctor Who you speak of?" Um, but cool little reference in uh, at least to me, I thought it was a reference was uh. Where the Daleks are notice the Doctor and they're going seek, locate, destroy. I'm like, is that a reference to Destiny of the da- Daleks? I don't know if it's Destiny, but I know they say that. Yeah, um, there are a couple nice references. Uh, one that I liked was how he uh, how they contact uh, um, unit like with the 
I can't remember what it is, but it was like a psychic telegram. That goes back oh, all the yeah. way to like the Tom Baker's first season for sure. Oh, when, when you guys yeah. saw the the, uh, the helicopter that was picking up the TARDIS, did you immediately go, yep, it's unit? Nope. Unit. I, I knew that. Well, that and I knew they were in the storage. So it was like, oh, so that's how unit's getting them. Uh, Here's my thing. I was like, that is completely unnecessary and unnecess- unnecessarily drawing attention to the fucking doctor. Um, I'm like, why do they feel the need to get this giant ass helicopter and drag the TARDIS like over they have the budget for it, Bill? They have the TV budget. We for have it. the budget. We have the money for a helicopter. <laughs> no, no. What do you mean they don't have the money for it? They unnecessarily spent money to like fly the TARDIS over London. <laughs> I'm just like, you don't, why would you do this to the doctor, man? He's hanging by a thread onto the TARDIS. They didn't know I, he was in there, Bill, remember? one of those things they didn't think of on a logistics standpoint. They were just yeah. like, how do we open this special big? Helicopters awesome. are awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong, but I'm like, this is so unnecessary. I just have a, a funny thought in my head that that's not really a helicopter. It's like one of those, um, remember in, car, in like in those Wiley Coyote cartoons where you have the pedal helicopter, and inside it's a pedal, pedal helicopter with Russell T. Davies on it and Stephen Moffat shouting, <laughs> faster, Davies, faster! Oh, uh, no, they're in the Wicked Witch of the West, like, bike, and they're just, like, dragging the TARDIS, just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> Stop running that, Moffat! <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. Russell T. Davies is trying to steal the show back. Like, I was wrong to give it up! I feel, I feel so happy that Russell T. Davies knows how to operate a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> He's planning on... Because him. every time I've seen that man in an interview, I just think to myself, that guy knows how to fly a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> that man has combat experience. That man fought in the war, don't you know? <laughs> I've seen some He's stuff, stuff man. I've seen some Time War things. Wouldn't recommend yeah, that's why he created. That's why he created the Time War was because he was like, you know, I'm a Nam veteran. So that is Nam flashbacks. It was out. He did. <laughs> so now the Time War is a metaphor for Nam. <laughs> well, I, I think, think you know, can make anything a um, metaphor for Nam. <laughs> At this point, yeah. We need to make, um, we need a uh, Room Two Thirty Seven style documentary about how the Time War is Nam. <laughs> oh God, we do. We really do. Um, so you guys want to. Sorry to switch gears, but you guys want to talk about the Zygons? Let's talk about the Zygons, man. I thought they were pretty cool. I, I liked them when I found out they were not the main threat and stu- such of the show. Like, I, I, I legit got worried for a second. Like, really? These vill- these guys are going to be, like, the main driving thing of this 50th anniversary, and they didn't bother yeah, setting them up at all? <laughs> yeah, weren't you, weren't you feeling like that's it? Just... An alien race? Like, shouldn't, like, you know, you, you think it's going to be something bigger, like the fucking master, or like somebody really, really big. Yeah, but and once, they weren't. once you see that they're just like the metaphor yeah. for the time war, I'm like, okay, right. that's fine, that's fine. I mean, that's that's the really cool thing, and I think I was trying to get to this, and I got sidetracked earlier. That's the really effective and well-written thing about this episode, is everything in it is a metaphor for what the Doctor is about to do with the time war. You know, um, uh, what, what is her name, Alice? Alice Stewart is about to blow up London to stop the Zygon threat. And, no, you know, this Kate is all... Stewart. Kate Stewart. Kate Stewart, excuse me. Um, David and... Stewart. <laughs> because and, because yeah, Kate exactly. is very close to Alice, so... <laughs> Shut up, Dylan. Um, I need to read and... Kate in Wonderland. <laughs> be a big hit. It's the autobiography for... Yeah, 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 yeah. Bill totally watches, watches Alice plus eight. <laughs> anyway... Um, Anyway, uh, I just thought that was a really well written thing to do, and it was just it was just a really good idea. Uh, the Zygons themselves were pretty creepy. Uh, I was certainly like wet my pants at them, not really. Um, but I don't know. I thought they were cool design wise. Bill, look- you can tell the truth. <laughs> no, I'll I'll tell the truth where I did embarrass myself. I squealed like a little girl when I saw P- uh, Capaldi's face. <laughs> yeah, I actually shouted uh, when I saw that scene. I was like Capaldi. Well, it's so out of nowhere because you don't expect it, and you're just like, "Oh, it's all the the, the previous." I, 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 had, I had two I had two gut reactions when I heard like when he's like, "No, thirteen was like, hey, it's Capaldi." Oh, I wonder if we're gonna say, "Oh dear God, his eyes." <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually like it's kind of funny when I saw that scene, Capaldi, and then I went, "Damn it!" Because now my dad was right because he um he kept saying, "Hey, is the twelfth Doctor gonna be in here?" I was like, "No, Dad, they 
he's going to be in the Christmas special. He's in this. So now but, after yeah. all, I probably didn't tell him, you were right, Dad. I, I expected him to show up, because if they're going to cast the Doctor that far in advance, and they're going to do a 50th anniversary special, well, he's, he's probably going to be in there somewhere. I wasn't entirely thinking that, because they said they wrapped filming on it a few weeks before Smith said he was leaving. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. But again, it was probably just easy as, hey, just just stand here. We're going to film your eyes and your hands. I mean, put it in later, dude. It almost looked like it could have been stock footage from another Capaldi movie. Like it was taken out of World War Z <laughs> and they just put it over the fucking TARDIS. Wow, they took this. That was well integrated footage from Penguins of Madagascar they used. <laughs> yeah, because he was in great. that for an episode. <laughs> that's kind of like I was, that's Wait, like he, I was joking was with in, Bill. That's kind of like he I was, was joking with Bill. Penguins yeah. TV show? He played Uncle Nigel. Huh. It's kind of like I was joking with with uh, Bill recently that uh, to get Eccleston in this, they could just integrate uh, footage from Thor, and everybody would wonder why the Doctor was an elf. <laughs> well, he's going through a really weird stage of his life right now. <laughs> That's how he's dealing with the grief of the Time War. This is right before the Time War. He went through an elf period where he was just obsessed with elves. If you're Doctor, stuff, we need it... you to serve us in the war. No, not now, not now. Why? We need you. I'm going to a convention. He's I'm fighting Thor. Because no, if, you, if you're no, getting no, no, stock like... footage from a movie to put Eccleston in your thing, you've got two options. It's either Elf Doctor or Doctor with a metal face. So, <laughs> or, or or Doctor who looks like he's from Braveheart from that movie, The Seeker. Mm. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Everyone watched. Yeah, forget you're about okay to forget about that. I don't know. You could probably get some footage from GI Joe. Um, yeah, exactly. No, no, no. Get footage from that movie where he played John Lennon. He played John he played Lennon? John Lennon? In a, in a TV movie, yes. Oh, God. It's I really to weird that. to watch because he does a John Lennon impression. And I'm sorry, the man is very respectable in music. I can never take that away from him. His voice is tough to take seriously. <laughs> kind of is. When it's coming out of other people's mouths particularly, it's just... It sometimes crosses into hysterical. Hello, I'm the Doctor. I'm from Liverpool. I'm going to save you. I can't uh, shit. But... And then I will make music about it. Uh, but... Then Rose came in dressed as Yoko Ono. <laughs> Yoko, fucking Rose is the Yoko Rose Ono. Rose Ono. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, to get back to the, uh, the Zygons, I... I didn't think they should have had them talk. At least in their monster form, well, that well, looked kind of Well, that's dumb. the thing. They did talk. Um, that's how they talked in Terror of the Zygons. They had that... Yeah, they were that... just respecting what came before. I, I understand your problem, but that was just them. I know, but I was like, they were so much freakier when they didn't speak out of their own mouth. Hey, hey, now hey, it's hey, hey, like... hey, happier because um, I, I, if I'm right, in, in Day of the Doctor, they just do like, like we're the monsters, grr. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, that's all it, that... it would have been a little harder to deal with if they went with how they actually sounded. Where they sound like this all the goddamn That would have been time. creepier. That would have been a little creepier if they would have talked yes, lower. It's this fucking is like... hard to understand this. And then it's just the Ice Warriors, so it's like, like all you got to do is add this thing. And it's like... Even with the Ice Warriors, they quit doing that because they knew it would be tough to understand. <laughs> but um... They start doing bean voices like, Oh, the heart of the doctor. Um... But here's my thing with the Zygons, and this is not a bad thing. I was not expecting them to have a big impact as they did on the episode itself. Um, I was thinking they were just going to show up uh, in Tenant's part and then be gone. I didn't know that they were going to that they were going to have like a, a part, a big part of the episode. Mm, I didn't know. I didn't know that they were going to be the main threat, which they weren't. But they were in the story. That's a metaphor for the time where they were the main threat. They were de- you you can't take them out of the plot easily. You'd have to do something. No, and that's that's fine. I was just worried that I mean, they'd be like the thing that was driving the whole story, and it's not. They're just driving the the plot. What gets them all together? Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, ultimately, they're a plot contrivance come up with by not not in a bad way. They're just the thing that that is the threat that gets the doctors together, so that way the war doctor can be like, "Yeah, I'm not going to do this." Yeah, I mean, yeah. a part of me says that if you're going to bring back a classic monster, I'd rather you do it in an episode where they're a little bit more consequential. But um, yeah, but it's the Zygons who gives a fuck. I'm, I'm kidding. The thing I'm is, kidding. I think they were kind of thinking like, "Hey, we need something from the past in here," because I, I think they were 
kind of I like to think Moffat was like, "Yeah, I'm doing a lot of stuff that's more in con- that's more consequential to the last couple of years. I need to put something from the past. We haven't done the Zygons yet. I know that. Because I mean, you could do this this plot with other monsters. I mean, the, the basic outline of their plan is um, replace Queen Elizabeth and then put themselves in the paintings. You could do that with Cybermen. Um, yeah, we didn't need the Cybermen so recently after Nightmare and Silver. I know. I'm just, I, I, I'm they, just, they, they just, just looked at it as an opportunity example. to call back to the past and do something they haven't yeah. called to yet. Yeah, I'm fine. yeah I, I, this is Tenant's favorite monster, so. Yeah, me, me, and, me, and, me and Tyler were convinced that the only reason they're in there was because Moffat was trying to convince Tenant to be there. He's like, I don't know. Uh, the Zygons are going to be in it. Then I'm in. Great. I gotta write it. Do you really think he needs to be convinced? It was more like I bet Tennant was just sitting by the phone, tapping his foot furiously, and then it was like it barely started ringing. He was like, "Hello, I'm in." <laughs> well, we didn't even tell you what we're doing. No, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm totally in. We're doing Fright Night Four. Oh, wait, there was two of them. Oh, there there was a sequel. There's a Fright sequel, Night yeah. I saw that uh, at Best Buy, and I was like, "Oh, please tell me David Tennant's in that." He's not. I was like, oh. I think all they got, um, they got like, uh, I don't even know. I don't, I don't think they have anyone really recognizable. They definitely don't have Anton Yelchin in them. I mean, that was clear. The only, like, they have one person who's recognizable to me, and that's an actress named Jamie Murray, who was like, it was in a Warehouse 13, and she's in Defiance now. Mm. She was on Dexter for a season. But that's not important at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did you guys think about the the um the minor reference to Blink, where the doctor goes, it goes ding. I thought that, I was, that line was great, where she's like, what is that? It's a machine. I like the other reference. he says it goes ding, he's like, it's a machine that goes ding. I like the other reference to bling when Matt, uh, Matt Smith said... To bling? Uh, b- b- bleh, blink. Where, uh, <laughs> the doctor's bling. No, no, the other reference to blink where uh, Matt Smith says timey-wimey and John Hurt's like, timey-wimey, and uh, David Tent's like, I don't know where he picks this stuff up from. Uh, oh, God, that was so funny. Yeah, like David That's completely crazy. throws him... Uh, I love that moment where David completely throws Matt under the bus. Yep. And then, and then John Hurt starts using it not knowing what it means. Well, and he's just like, it's tiny one. He heard, and he's like trying to be hip with the kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a cup of soup. What's a cup of soup? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that yeah. was funny. I love Here's the other thing I really like. To get, to get a little bit more, to go more to the serious stuff, another thing I really liked was um, when he asked the, the more modern doctors, why have you decided to start being younger? What's wrong with being old? And they just look at him like... And just that look just said it all, where it's like, because of you, we just want to be young now. Just distance ourselves from you. Because if, because if we be, decide to become old, then we fight a war for who knows how damn long and die of old age. It, exactly. I thought that was really cool. And it makes a lot of sense now that we're getting an older doctor after this. Because now he's redeemed himself. He's come back from it. He's cool with it now. He's, he's happy with his gray hairs and... The fact, yeah, I mean, I just the thought, fact that he I just, remembers going to see movies that have been so get goddamn old now. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that it's cool that they're, they're, that they're kind of explaining it. Because when they cast Capaldi, I was like, that is a great choice, but a weird choice. Because there's a bunch of fangirls of this franchise who were like, like you know, there, uh, there are fangirls out there where it's like, they seem to only be obsessed with fucking Matt Smith. I, like, that's all my, they want to do. My favorite pick, like... Tumblr post I kept seeing was like this picture of like a stereotypical girl, you know, like geek girl who's like, I don't know, he's too old for the doctor. And you just have um, uh, William Hartnell casually go, bitch, please, what you saying? <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. that's definitely good because Capaldi is only like a few months younger than Hartnell was when he started. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I just wish that they would vary the ages a little more because for so long he's just been getting predictive. He's get, just been getting progressively younger to the point where I was worried eventually he'd be in diapers. Um, <laughs> It'd be kind of fun to have a legit... Dr. Wad Sonic! <laughs> I don't know how I'd feel if we got a legit child doctor. Um, if the actor was good, I think I think it could work. It would be fun. Uh, yeah, no. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. You're welcome. I'm, 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 um, I'm happy you were so faithful for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you for taking his idea out back and putting it out of its of misery. People, and a lot of people, since, we're, since we're talking about, you know, older and younger regenerations, um, do you think after Capaldi, 
do you think they'll ever go with a, a, a female doctor? Because that's all that's, that's all I hear about um, is like, will there be, ever be a female doctor? And even uh, what's her name, uh, Meredith, uh, the actress who played uh, Counselor yeah, Troy, yeah. Counselor, um, the actress who played uh, Counselor Troy from Star Trek TNG. Uh, she sent a letter directly to Moffat saying that she wants to play the next Doctor after Capaldi. That can be the that can be the big psychological thing of that season is all of a sudden he doesn't have a penis and he doesn't know what to do what to do. <laughs> like it's got to be so weird. Yeah, being what'll a happen to all those people we made up with? Concerned about <laughs> Matt Smith's whole... penis. It's got to be so weird being like a. It's got to be so weird being a Time Lord. Like you go to your favorite bar and your Time Lord friend's sitting there drinking. And you're like, "What's wrong with you? My wife regenerated. She's a dude now." Oh, that, see, that's the issue. It's like they have relationships and shit. They have children. It's like, what happens if they regenerate into a different gender? Wait a they minute. They have to looks see like if love lady. is still there. What What happens if they do it when when they're pregnant? Well, their bodies die, and I. I hate to be grim here, but I'm going to imagine the baby doesn't regenerate with it. That's possible. That would seem. We're like going a into a realm that's never been explored before, and I don't honestly. See, if I see, if I see, here's the thing: if I take over Doctor Who, this is the shit that's going to be explored. He's going to devote an entire season to you're going just to, you're, exploring you're, you're going the to, sexuality you're going of time. To really do that. Uh, I'll see if I, I can pass the censors. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the sexy version of Doctor Who. Yes, nothing's more sexy than dead pregnant women. <laughs> well, if you believe ABPR... Oh, this is going to a dark place. Yeah. You uh, wait, Duke, Duke, you should get a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> Nothing sexier than dead pregnant women. Yeah, and see if the police don't arrest him. Yeah, no, yeah, would... let's see if the people who print it will send me to the cops. <laughs> but, but yeah, you find um, somebody to print it. Oh, I, I, highly, well, I don't have arrested. money to do that anyway, so we're all out of I don't of think luck. you could get arrested for that. You just would be fucking ostracized. I got a really weird-looking stare, that's for sure. But anyway. You're anyway. the first person to get, like, banished from the U.S. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Dylan. You're, ba- deported, you're banished deported, from the t-shirt shop. Anyway. De- deported for a t-shirt. We're now going to let this topic die. <laughs> all right, fine. Back, back to back Dr. Who. Topic Dr. Dr. Who. Um, the thing about... Just because I know there were so many people, and I know a few people were still really like upset about the fact, like, oh, they missed the opportunity to catch someone who's out of the norm. I'm like, I just want a good actor. That's the thing. I, <clears throat> I don't get me wrong; it'd be it'd be great to see, you know, someday let's like get a you know get a black actor to play the doctor. It, it'd be great to see that. But on the other hand, I just want to see a good performance. I don't care what the guy honestly looks like. He could look That's like fucking thing. like. He could look like Sloth yeah. from the Goonies, but if he has Shakespeare <laughs> levels of acting, I'm not going to say no. I need to see that now. Yeah. I need to see that now. Sloth from the Goonies is the doctor. <laughs> hey, you guys. Go for it. He jumps out of the tarnish and just crushes somebody. <laughs> oh, God. He wears a pipe. It can be effective when done right. And then he has a Sonic Baby Ruth. <laughs> he just he just no his no he used the sonic screwdriver so he just starts beating somebody with it and the companion is like no doctor what are you doing mm. <laughs> doctor love chunk I'm glad um, I can make that image happen for you all <laughs> um, here's, oh, we here's need, my we need thing. a gif of that now here's my thing and I'm not a, I'm not against a female doctor but I don't think as much as people talk about it, it'll never, will never. I don't think we'll ever get a female doctor on the grounds of he's been a male doctor for, uh, for the past eleven times, well, twelve times now. I don't think you know a sudden gender change is going to fly well. As much as people say they want it, um, I, there, there's there's a good amount of people who are like, no, keep it the same. Like, I don't think you're going to get out of it without any scars. Well, here's the thing. It's not like any decision in in in, in, a, in casting changes. It's not going to go well at first. Like when Daniel Craig was cast as James Bond, people were like, eh, eh, "He's got blood hair." And Dylan and I he were was like, in he was in a kid in King Arthur's court. Change him. And Dylan and I were like, "But Roger Moore had blonde hair. Shut up." Um, yeah, but the, the, we were looking at black and white bit. photos. Shut up. That's a little bit less extreme, though. It, that, this would be like no, if they yeah. said, hey, guess what? James Bond's new name is Jane Bond, and uh, 
She's, she almost did that in the 90s. She's James no longer going to be named Jane, <laughs> and she's going to be played by Whoopi Goldberg. We're going all out, oh. All right, here's the thing. Oh, that. You can't tell me you're not going to pay to see Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> oh, no, play no, James Oh, no, 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 no. That would definitely get attention, but you're not going to get positive attention. <laughs> No, it's gonna get. You're just gonna get curiosity, just like what? What is this and why? But is on the this? bright side, it's gonna get enough attention to where this the sequel is just greenlit immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out it's just a script of Sister Act Two, but they put super secret agents in it. Sister Act Two was made into a movie. Yeah, I know. They just they just said let's just take the script from that movie. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you were like uh, let's do a sequel to Sister Act. They did a sequel to Sister Act. I know. I I'm not like the nine the existence. I was trying to make a joke. <laughs> I thought you were. I am such a big fan of the first Sister Act <laughs> that I I, I denounced the sequel. <laughs> um, they they cast Whoopi Goldberg as the dark. Uh, not the dark. They cast Whoopi Goldberg as James Bond, and then they decide to make a remake of, of You to a Kill, and all of a sudden the sex scene. Oh gets even my worse. god. Oh, Jesus <laughs> anyway, God. Doctor as if, Who. As if that sex scene was... Like, anyway, Doctor had another famous British icon that's gone on for decades to tie in. Uh, uh, all right, so let's go to other things that we haven't covered. Um, what haven't we covered, boys? Um, um, um yeah, I, 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 I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Queen Elizabeth's in this special. Yeah, we, we haven't touched on that at all. Let's talk about that entire plot. Um, okay, so the doc, so the tenth Doctor is in what is it, eighteen sixty, whatever the year, fifteen sixty two, fifteen sixty two, and he's fucking Queen Elizabeth the first, supposedly. And um, I took this as a re- oh, there's something else I want to talk about in this vein. I took this as a reference to in the end of time when he's talking to the Ood and he goes, "Got married." Um. I assume that this is what he's talking about, so which which leads me to also. Ass- I, I'm going to look that up because you might be onto something, but I can't remember if they if he. I'm sure he named. Well, wait Jack. a minute. What about that? Um, like I think it was the second or third episode with Martha where he takes her to uh, see Shakespeare. What queen was it that was all pissed off at him? Oh Jesus Christ! You're right. Yeah, was that this one? Was that I can't remember. Was this, was this, I'm looking it up right now because you are all putting up. Actually, right. Duke and I were talking about Duke. You and I were talking about which where in Tennant's timeline is this taking place. I, I mean, um, because he he's, he's not with Rose or any companion. So he's kind of all by himself. But based on the performance, he doesn't seem as gloomy as he did during his farewell parade of death. Oh, but here's the thing: he is definitely talking about. All right, this definitely takes place in between the waters of Mars and the end of time. Because Good Queen Bess was a nickname for Elizabeth I. Yeah, that was what I, just I was looked thinking. It up. Like, did he say like name? Or Which something? makes the my yeah. whole problem with end of time kind of more weird than. Well, no, well, okay. Here's the thing. So that's definitely what he's talking about because he gets married in this to the Good Queen Bess, and that's what he says when he co- when he goes to Ood World. Here's the thing, though. <clears throat> in in a uh, well, in the, at the end of the day of the Doctor, after John Hurt's Doctor is left, uh, Matt Smith and David Tennant are talking, and David Tennant goes, "Since I'm not going to remember this anyway, just tell me where I'm going." And I was like, "Oh God, I wish I wish this would be like a clip show of all of fucking seasons five, six, and seven, <laughs> where he's just like, well, first things first. First, you're going to encounter a worm that shape shifts, and then, um, and then just progressively go on. You're going to get married to." The daughter of one of your companions. It's going to get weird. Um, <laughs> Turn into this five-minute long monologue where he just explains everything that happened in si- season five. David Tennant just kills I'd be himself. happy to tell you, Clara. Get my diary. We got a lot of details to get out. <laughs> um, what's that? What's that fish thing that that River brings up in the episode where he dies? He starts talking about that to David Tennant. We finally find out the backstory between that behind that. By the way, by the uh, way, Ian, you mentioned it. That's the same queen in in the in the Shakespeare episode too. So. Oh. This ties together so many aspects of Tennant's run. Yay. Because in, in that episode, doesn't he know what? Doesn't he not know what he did to make her mad? Because yeah, yeah. yeah. It. <laughs> oh god, this is so awesome! <laughs> oh, the day of the Doctor is officially, officially, undeniably awesome. Also, any problems fair, you might though, have with I'm, it? I'm looking at one others. Uh, uh, she made a quick appearance in a, like a first Doctor story too. So she was like, you know, we fucked, right? <laughs> and Hartnell's like. <laughs> What on earth are you referring to, madam? Well, that didn't happen nothing. back then. 
I don't know nothing. Martha, get in the TARDIS. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> get, that the, was another... get, get the key. Get the, over the, get the, get the damn thing going. That was He's like running line. through the TARDIS oh, Indiana Jones style. Martha, yeah. start the TARDIS. <laughs> start the plane, Jock! Start the plane! This was actually another good line from John Hurt where it was kind of like the old series looking at the new series where John Hurt was like, whenever they get married and uh, David Tennant and Queen Elizabeth are making out, and John Hurt says, Does, is there a lot of this in the future? And Matt Smith's like, it starts to happen, yeah. Oh, I thought that was You know genius. what I also love about that part? Clara just decides to throw confetti on them. That was so funny. I just, I just love the fact that the doctor is present at his, at his own wedding. Yeah. And they're both right. like he's his, his own two witnesses. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Actually, there is one thing I want to bring up because we don't, we haven't really talked about Clara herself. Um, yeah. My favorite, one of my favorite scenes in here is the scene between Clara and John Hurt's doctor. Oh, that was awesome. Because she literally tells him, "I don't think you, even if you're like this, I don't see you ever doing." you know, committing some kind of horrible atrocity. Mm-hmm. And even, yeah, you know, I'm... most of um, the doc of John Hurt's, uh, trans- you know, character change came from Clara herself. Yeah, he's, she's question, definitely... Um, what what sure. they were talking about at the end, where it's like, Tennant won't remember it, uh, Hurt won't remember it, so that way uh, Nine and Ten's Doctor's run still makes sense as far as how they act and in this... But the thing I'm wondering, does Smith remember this? Do they establish Yeah, he remembers it. He must. Yeah, he must. Because it's the end he remembers of this point happen- forward. As far yeah. as it's, the end of this- it's happening like in his track. Because at the end of this episode, he sort of has a new direction in life, and if he didn't remember it, that wouldn't happen. Um, yeah, because he goes looking for Gallifrey. Yeah. Okay, I just wasn't sure. So, uh, yeah. So it looks like in Series 8, we might get the Return of the Time Lords. That's going to be weird. Maybe we can finally have Omega in the new series. I oh my that because god! Because for a while now, I've been wanting. I've been kind of getting over. Okay, we get it. You're sad. The Time Lords are gone. I've been kind of waiting for them to come back. Yeah, yeah, I've been waiting. And for you have so many potential have... good potential stories with the return of the Time Lords because, like, um, you you now have them. Like, well, uh, we've been gone for a while. It was your fault. Uh, and also, you have the Time Lords that were once this great race. It'd be nice to see them knock down a, several pegs. Yeah, try to make them kind of rebuild their place. And you could bring back um, what was that? What was that female Time Lord that was a villain in the old series? What was Zorani. her name? That's not going to happen. Why not? Because oh, the writers, the, 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 the writers who created her, are very like you got to. They they are very greedy about because about, they still own the rights to the character. Oh, so they're Kevin McClory, basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. If we're, if we're getting oh, a couple creators, Lord, I want Ramona back. Yeah. I like to see back too. Um, I've always I wanted like to see, like see her be like a recurring character. That, I've always like, wanted to see them bring Omega into the new series. I want him to be the guy that blew up the TARDIS back in season five. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to see in 50th. Like, are they going to finally say who blew up the TARDIS? I wonder if we're going to get that at all anymore. Yeah, I just I just realized that they never explained that. That was Osama was... bin Laden. <laughs> oh, Dylan! It was the Kool-Aid yeah. and the entire time. I'm actually, I, I, if they don't explain it in tre- by Trenzalor, I'm going to be like, dude, seriously? Oh, yeah. Martha, Trenzalor blew up the TARDIS. Oh, wow, that's right. They're prob- Oh, wow, that makes Peter perfect Davison sense. Peter Davison blew up the TARDIS. The butt- <laughs> Not the doctor, <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter Davison as himself. <laughs> he got into the universe and blew up the TARDIS. If I can't be in the 50th, then fuck you! <laughs> he opens up his coat, and he's got, like, a string of dynamite wrapped around him. Oh gee, oh that's so this dark. The latest oh. scene we never saw where River runs in, and she's like, "What are you doing here?" Ah, nothing. <laughs> Ignore that ticking sound. He opens up his trench coat. He's he's naked except for this string of dynamite. You're not well. I know. Boom. <laughs> you know, going back to the queen, the doctor has a history of pissing off the queen, just like. Yeah. All these different queens. Why is the one in yeah. the Why is the one in the future that's riding on the space wheel so like happy to see him? <laughs> she's the She's that rebellious member who's like, yeah, my ancestors suck. You're the man. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah, because because one of them creates a unit, and then you know you've got the good queen best. You know, you mean Torchwood, not unit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it was some guy oh, yeah, with a I... nice mustache <laughs> found a unit. <laughs> That's true. I keep forgetting that those are two different things. Um, shouldn't Torchwood be the ones that were in charge of the Black Ar- uh, the Black Archive, or maybe they were? They, before they got... fell apart, basically. 
I mean, they're dead now. So That's yeah, true. I mean, you watch if you watch the Torchwood stuff, they're 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 pretty dead. Um, they, they, so like I mean, Torchwood kind of fell apart during uh, what was that? Uh, Children of Earth. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then, they weren't back together at the end of well, nothing was put together well at the end of Miracle Day, but. Yeah, they put them back together, and now they're... I like the far. premise of Miracle Day, but it did fall apart by the end. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, the, it got really convoluted. And now there's, like, no talks of continuing the series any further, so it's like... Well, yeah, Davies doesn't want to do anything right now, and everyone's moved on to other stuff. And Hark, and Hark this is now... Uh, yeah, Barrowman's off hunting Oliver Queen with an arrow. He is can beautiful, Dr. no matter what, what they say. Time. Malcolm <laughs> Mullen. And it's... Bill, Bill, you'll you'll appreciate this. So, like, I'm talking to Bobby, and he's talking to me about Arrow before I got into it. And I'm like, so I, it, so they killed Jack Harkness at the end of the first season? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, he'll be back. And he's like, nah, they're not bringing him back. I'm like, no, nah, you're going to see a scene with Malcolm Merlin on that damn rooftop, and he's going to be like, <laughs> What does it mean? <laughs> Ask me what it means. Ask me what it Do- means. Uh, Doctor Who just has bad luck with with spinoffs. They, they go really good and then just something happens. Like you had this whole thing with Torchwood and they can't make any more Sarah Jane Chronicles because she died. That's a reason to stop doing that. Um, <laughs> like if they could have just had her son carry the... Why something. aren't there any more Sarah Jane adventures? Because the actress is dead. You just That's turn not it, a good enough excuse. You just turn it into the adventures of K-9. I they know. did that. That show sucked balls. <laughs> No, we watched that. that show. Both attempts of doing that show sucked balls. They did one in the eighties, and they tried to do one recently. Yeah. Well, K-9 okay, gets... fine. One recently went one season. Is it in continuity no. with Doctor Who? No. It's like some kind of parallel Earth, right, Duke? It's okay. The way it works is, uh, technically, the BBC does not own the rights to K nine. What? They, the character is still owned by one of the guys who wrote the first story he appeared in, who's still alive. Um, the BBC, weirdly enough, has the rights to the design, but not the character, so they have to work a deal out with him. He's more than happy to let him use the character, you know. That for- explains my next question. You know, the Daleks keep getting, like, upgraded looks, and the Cybermen recently got a really cool upgrade. Can't we give K-9 some legs or something? Why? <laughs> some legs. No. Yeah, but, 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 but the thing about that was um, he shopped it out, and in the first episode of that, he has, like, like for, like, five minutes, he has the old design, but they had to, like, work out crazy loopholes and a contract deal to only have it on for a certain amount of time. After that, he has this new kitty futuristic version. What does he do? Um, He more or less just acts like he does on Doctor Who. He detects threats and makes the human characters do shit. Does it have any, like, is there any mention of Time Lords nope. or the Doc? Nope. Oh, is he just a robot? He's a robot who came from a strange dimension, and it's very vague, because they can't tell you anything. So basically, uh, he's just that character in a video game who constantly tells you what to do. Like, you know, do a barrel roll, and you're like, shut up, K-9. <laughs> he's Cogliostro. You can't run my life, you fucking robotic dog! <laughs> he's Cogliostro. They, they got the same voice actor to voice him in that show. Um, that's the one nice thing I can tell you about that fucking show. <laughs> I, I love him just like that's nice. Anyway, um, uh, what else haven't we? It was something, it was something we tried. Oh, back to David Tennant. Okay, another thing I really love. I don't want to go. They bring that up. I hated I that like, actually. What? I thought it really his scene. I, like, what? I, I really thought it shat on that scene. I hated. Um, that. Here's well, the thing. That uh, going back, back to the fact that um. Uh, yeah. End of time is not well loved. That's one of the scenes everyone despises with a fiery passion. The people who hate it. That line. I don't even really care for it. I think it makes him sound kind of emo-y and bitchy. And then everybody no, I really like that line. line. He, everybody hates the line where he goes to 2005 because those are, those are the same fans that hate Rose. It's just this big, this yeah, big love hate thing. A lot thing. of the fans um, have going on. It was it was more of a just a fun little like 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 David like the temp doctor's not gonna know that's his final words. It's just this phrase that means nothing to him. And I like how yeah, Matt Smith. I, I, says it was that a wink. It was just that. a wink to the audience, and if it, that's fine, I don't I don't mind it. It didn't bother. It didn't like ruin anything about the show for me. I just it really, ruined existence. I just really did not like that. I was like, really, you have to take like that really big dramatic moment for me and just. 
Yes. And then Matt Smith's I like, I if it was staring directly at you. <laughs> yeah. He was like, fuck you, Ian. And then Matt Smith's like, he always says that. And I'm looking at the TV and I'm like, he's only said that on two occasions. How many times did we watch that scene again, Doctor? Well, I, 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 I like how the Doctor brings him. Listen, it's I like that. Scene. <laughs> he keeps replaying it like, all right, that That's was why he bought the DVD. <laughs> it just says, fuck you, Tenet. Some people um, have footage, have like home movies of their birthdays. His is just Tenet dying. Because it's just <laughs> uh, I liked it a lot, and here's why. Because I figured out, I figured out early on that that's where it was taking place in continuity. And Ian, it reminded me of a discussion you and I had where we were like, I think it would be cool if the reason why Tenet was so vehement about not regenerating was because he knew he was going to regenerate into Smith, and they didn't get along. So, and that's not what they're doing exactly. Because he doesn't remember what happened. Right. He doesn't exactly. even remember that line anymore. Right, but I still thought it was a nice little nod to shit's about to go down with you. Yeah. So I thought that was what I liked about it. Just remember, um, everybody, I'm never coming back. That's the thing. That's, that's the other sad, things, sad thing. We're never going to get David Tennant as the Doctor again. Unless they do another head of it, it, was, it was bizarre. Tennant. It was bizarre, or not bizarre is not the real word, surreal enough seeing him in this, because it's like, this is the first time I've seen you, like, in new Doctor Who stuff on TV since 2009. <laughs> it wasn't that, see, here's the thing, and maybe this is just because I only got into the show recently, so it's very, it's not, it's not that big of a gap for me in between the different Doctors, but it wasn't that weird for me. Like, I mean, it was certainly cool and novel to see all these Doctors on screen together, but I was like, oh, hey, David Tennant. Yeah, see, for me, it's like, you've been gone a long time, David Tennant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, same here. I, and now here you I are. I think and you're you just brought. You basically answered the reason as to why it doesn't hit you the same way because it it wasn't that long ago for you, basically. Yeah, for me, it's, it's just like, like oh, the end of time just happened. For me, it's <laughs> like okay, just, it's been it's been like four or five, no, four four years, and he's just sitting there all nonchalant on a blanket eating a picnic with Elizabeth the first, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, you're I'm back in form, like, David. Yeah, it's back and form and all that, but I feel like, as much as Tenet is my doctor, but the thing is, like, I had more gravitas, the gravity towards the scene with uh, Smith and Baker, because he, it's, it's, again, it's one of the most popular, if not the most popular doctor uh, out there. I to imagine David Tennant did what he could to be in that scene. I want to hang out with Tom Baker! <laughs> you already got yeah. to hang out Yeah, you're with married Tom. to the fifth one. Your father, your son-in-law is, I mean, your dad-in-law is the fifth one. But he's not Tom yeah, I mean, Baker. All of a sudden, t- Peter Davison feels a disturbance. <laughs> and he just goes, that asshole. David just talks shit about me. Georgia, file the divorce papers. Georgia, your husband's in trouble again. No, he didn't forget to wash my dishes. <laughs> David Tennant's he complaining did, to Moffat. He mentioned Tom Baker. Whenever D- David Tennant mentions Tom Baker by name, he's just like... Colin Baker and Sylvester McCoy come out with torches and we're like, we're going to get that bastard. If only just Georgia, up. hide the children tonight. Your husband is going to be beaten again. Where's all Paul? Oh, he had to go just, work. God damn it! All the past <laughs> doctors form a lynch mob. <laughs> and, and then, uh, you know, Paul. Uh, Paul has like he is like, are you with us, Paul? And he's just reading a newspaper in the corner, like eh, I'm going to sit this one out, guys. Hold on, guys. I'm telling you, I had another contract for a fifth job. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of he's William awesome. Arnold there. <laughs> I did come he's back, David. He's like Ben. He's like, he's like, he's like Ben Kenobi from Star Wars. <laughs> you must go to David Tennant's house and seek out Georgia. Um, Why do you need to tell me this? That was my plan. Oh, um, uh, do you I want needed to a cameo. <laughs> I needed a cameo where I wasn't being played by another actor or stock footage. <laughs> Which is like. I'm wondering how how uh ah, sorry, let me rephrase the sentence. I'm wondering when they got Paul McGann to sign off on Night of the Doctor because they use clips of him with the long hair and stuff and and images of him with the long hair. So I'm like, huh, he obviously wasn't able to do it when they're filming this. No, I, yeah, I, actually, I can help you there because uh, about two months ago. There were rumblings that he was filming something for the BBC. No one knew what it was was exactly. A lot of people were just assuming, oh, he's doing, like, interview stuff because they're going to have a bunch of TV specials. No, no one thought it was going to be anything big. 
And it turned out it was that. That's going to cool. be nice. Then we found out it was fucking Paul McGann, <laughs> right? That's the reaction everyone's having. It's fucking yeah. Paul McGann. Oh, um, yeah, Ian, exactly. Ian, uh, if you and Bill are still interested, uh, Duke, could you point them in the right direction of like what Eighth Doctor audio dramas they should check out at Big Finish? Oh, there's tons. Um, well, because in Night of the Doctor, the one thing I really liked about it was he name checks all of his audio drama companions. Yeah, yeah. And uh, meant, there's a uh, there's a couple places where you could start. Um, uh, the first one is uh, uh, with a story called Storm Warning, w- uh, where he gets his first companion in that r- in the audio drama series called Charlie Pollard. Uh, she's a, uh, I can't remember the time, but it was like, uh, I want to say it's like in the late 1800s. She was on this uh, ship called the R101, and this is a spoiler, but this is her entire character. The ship ends up crashing and dying, and as far as history is concerned, Charlie died there. So the doctor just decides, well, the, the entire world thinks you're dead. Come with me, and we'll have adventures until, inevitably, we have to stop having adventures. Um, right. Not not, be, um, not because the character dies, but they just stop. And then that goes on for a while. Then they started a new series where he had a companion called Lucy. That goes for four years, and it's very solid. It's very reminiscent like uh, of a lot of the stories, very reminiscent of the new show. And they just started... Last year, they started, a, a, like, his third kind of series called Dark Eyes, and that's a good place to go because it's just this, like, four se- uh, stories that are just long, kind of season-long arc. I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. There's a lot to do, and I'm really glad that uh, Stephen Moffat was cool enough to say, hey, if you guys want to check him out, Big Finish has done a lot of stuff with him that I like. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Have they mentioned the Time War at all in this? They don't. They can't. Um, the thing is, Big Finish only has the rights to do material from the classic series. Oh, okay. And plus, they've mentioned even if they had the rights, they don't want to tackle that because whatever they do, even if they're in the format where visuals aren't a problem, they just don't think that they could come up with anything that would live up with the image people have in their minds. It's just... It, right. Like, they set up something so big that they're afraid that if they tackle it, they're just not going to please everyone. Right. It kind of goes back right. to that thing we were talking about with the Nightmare Child. Exactly. Yeah. Where it's like when I hear the word Nightmare Child. Everybody has their own child, opinion. But there's going to be a good number of people who are like, that's not my Nightmare Child. You don't like, have personally, right. I picture the thing from Total Wait, Recall that's like, Quaid, start the reactor. Um, Quato? The Nightmare Child is Quato? Well, well, if you want like a cool representation of what the Nightmare Child looks like, go check out uh, the CGI story called uh, the, the Dalek that Time Forgot. Oh, I love that thing. That is that is one of the best fan films I've seen in a long time. To me, the Nightmare Child is the worms from the Avengers. Well, in in night in um in the time to- in um the Dalek that time forgot, it's a giant Colin mutant. A Colin mutant. It's Colin. What, yeah, it's what the Daleks used to be. Oh, that makes sense. Makes sense. About it and just, uh, uh, uh. Sorry, I, I, I'm actually a bit distracted right now, but okay, I'm good. Um, all right, so th- there's something we keep like trying to bring up, and I keep forgetting what it was. Um, anyway, boys, we're about two hours in, so I think we're gonna wrap up in a couple minutes here. But uh, let's do, let's just jump into overall thoughts on where this brings the show and how and how this is going to impact the show from now on cuz boys Gallifrey is back so no that's no, a big no deal. it's not back entirely we're just building up for it to be back yeah it's, it's and we right, also but, forgot but no. to talk about the little snippet of the christmas special you guys want to give thoughts on that uh, we're gonna hang on. We're gonna we're gonna do that after we give give scores for the day of the Doctor. See, see, Gallifrey's not really back, but it is out there. Now we have to have the Star Trek three like, thing where like they go saying, looking for like it. That's like that's like watching the end of Wrath of Khan and saying Spock is back. Except right, right. No one knows where the hell he is, and he doesn't even know what he is. See, now we're gonna, no, but I mean, now we're gonna get is, Doctor Who season yeah. eight, the search for Gallifrey. <laughs> Yes, that's what I was going to say. But Gall- Gallifrey isn't burnt anymore. This is a big fucking deal. So, so I'm just wondering if it's just in a... Because it's obviously stuck in a painting now, so it's probably just at some weird snooty art collector's house in France. 
Andy Warhol has fucking. Oh, let me just yelled. say real quick. Uh, I loved what they did with the uh, 3D painting thing. I thought that was really cool. Uh, oh, that looked just amazing. from an effect standpoint. Uh, since I'm the guy that does all the video effects and stuff, I, I thought that looked amazing. Yeah, it was also just a really cool idea that that's what Time Lord art is. I like that. Oh. Time, there's Time Lord everything. It's like these are Time Lord cookies. You know, I have you're not off Lord. because cookies Rassilon that are bigger on the inside. They're bigger. On, they're bigger on the inside. You're you're not off because Rassilon has this thing where everything he owns is the whatever of Rassilon. Like this is the staff of Rassilon, the sash of Rassilon, the car keys of Rassilon, the, <laughs> the secret stash of Rassilon, sandals of Rassilon. Like the guy is just obsessed. He would be the guy in real life that tries to make his stuff look so impressive and nobody's impressed. Like, this is the Prius of Lorassalon. Precisely, precisely. <laughs> this is the coffee mug of Rassalon. That's what it says on the mug. You can arrest him. The beans of Rassalon. He goes and around referring to himself. you just hear someone himself. shout, Give it a fucking rest, Tim. You want the Tim of Rassalon? No, I'm goddamn not. He la- he's like Batman. He labels everything. He goes around referring to himself in the first person, like yeah, Rassilon would like Rassilon. a cup of coffee. I was I was watching Rass- an episode of Batman: Brave and the Bold the other day, and in it it has Ace in it, and he gives Ace a treat for doing a good job, but it's in the shape of a bat. So I just have this mental image of Batman making little bat dog treats in the oven. <laughs> Wait, when you said Ace, uh, I was thinking, I was. <laughs> Duke, when he said Ace, I forgot Ace the Bat Hound. I actually thought he teamed up with the uh, with the Doctor's companion. Well, her and her and Batman must have blew shit up a lot. Batman wants I, Ace I, to solve a mystery. He's like, you want a bat snack? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, thank you, yeah, Batman. Oh. No, I thought I thought of the uh, the Scooby Doo Batman crossover from the from the seventies, where fucking Batman has bat snacks. Uh, he has them in this like giant sack, and I'm like, why is Batman carrying around a sack of cookies called Bat Snacks? Dogs get hungry no matter where they are. He doesn't have Ace the Bat Hound in that. So Robin that is very away... hungry no matter where they are. So he can give them away to children he saves because it's way cheaper than telescopes. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, nice, nice. I appreciated that reference too. As did I. Yeah, um, I so you guys want to get back on track? Let's get back on track. <laughs> Ian's like, I don't want to talk about Day of the Doctor. Day of the Doctor is stupid. No. Let's talk about um, the mid-afternoon of the Doctor. <laughs> the brunch of the Doctor. <laughs> just Let's talk about the dawn of the Doctor. Oh, that sounds awesome. The dawn of the Doctor. We just get really specific. The Monday morning of the Doctor. <laughs> the the 9.37 of the Doctor. The, ninth, the 9.37 a.m. of the Doctor. <laughs> the all-nighter of the Doctor. The 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 the, uh, the frat party of the doctor. The after school band special of the doctor. <laughs> the bathroom time of the doctor. <laughs> Matt Smith the straining. <laughs> I don't want it. To, and then, and then this is the time for like, I want it to go. I don't want to go. Be careful. It's gonna hurt. Clara's going to the bathroom on the TARDIS. Be careful not to fall in. That's a time lord to- toilet. It's bigger on the inside. <laughs> an, it only needs oh, flushing God. every hundred, every two hundred years. <laughs> I can't breathe. Ah, oh. uh, time lord poop humor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Me and me and Bill once had an intense conversation about how does Batman make guano. Um, <laughs> okay. By the way, by the way, uh, one thing I I, I just oh. it's just not came to me, and I want to share this. At one point during the classic series. Um, they they made they had this eternal note that said, "Oh, by the way, do not show the doctor ever eating food." And someone had to ask why. Well, because when you eat, obviously, what you eat has to go somewhere, and we don't want people thinking that this alien uh, person who looks like a human being goes to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, the alien doesn't. So terrified of the doctor pooping. <laughs> They, we yeah, they were to... they were ultra concerned about that idea. I'm not joking. Why? Why? Because they're weird. <laughs> because they didn't want people to the think of the mechanics. They're so terrified of shit. Bill, it may seem outrageous that they didn't want people to think of the mechanics of Time Lord poop, but based on the conversation we've been having, they may have their concerns may have been more well founded than you think. Yeah. <laughs> we find out that we find out I mean, that their Sydney paintings knew. could hold an army. Imagine what their poop does. <laughs> 
Time Lords. Yeah, that's how Time Lords are born. We fu- oh, Jesus the Z- Christ. The Zygons invade, invade the TARDIS by hiding themselves in his poop. Congratulations, Tyler. You thought of a dumber idea than the looms. <laughs> we Oh, Jesus Christ. And people we don't find even out know that- what the looms are. I, I want to see the uncut version of an adventure in space and time where we find out that Sidney Newman had notebooks on how Time Lords poop. <laughs> he was just sitting in his room just like, I wonder how this Doctor character to, uh, goes to the bathroom. And he has complex diagrams about how it works. No, he just works out every single aspect of Time Lord society. All of our questions about Time Lord poop and Time Lord sex and all this other Time Lord stuff. <laughs> is like all... scene, this, this feels like that scene from The Big Bang Theory where Raj is like, how does Aquaman poop? <laughs> okay, can we? Can we? We're done. Can we, can no, we, no, no, we're worse. not done. <laughs> we are so not done. Well, me and Tyler can be done. Uh, um. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm laughing too hard as it is. I need to stop. Um. All right. So let's 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 do you know let's do final thoughts. Final overall thoughts. I think we've covered everything that we can possibly bring up about the day ooh, of the Doctor. Ooh, they used the uh, the original intro. They did. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's talk about that. There is no real intro for this episode except for the classic. Doo-wee! Yeah, the classic Hartnell era intro. Yeah, and they even use the same awesome. visual and everything. Yep. Also, the that scientist awesome. has a Tom Baker scarf, and he points it out, and I yeah, tweeted. And, and they mentioned Trotter Lane. Yeah, she's yep. working at that. Mind you, that reference means nothing other than this was an unearthly child, but then again, are, they, they do that all the time. They've done that twice before. There are little references peppered throughout, kind of like Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really fantastic homage to Doctor Who, but again, what really works about it, and these will be my general thoughts, it's an amazing homage with, an, with a really well-told story wrapping all these homages together. It is everything I could hope for from a Stephen Moffat-written Doctor Who 50th anniversary. So with that said, let's jump over to... Uh, we'll go in reverse... Thoughts. Yeah, let's go in reverse order from last time. So, Ian, your final thoughts. Uh, I, I, You guys made me come around on it a bit more. I'm not going to say it's completely washed away problem-free for me, but I, with that idea that it's the high council, I'm like willing to accept it more. I don't think it clears up all the issues, but I I do like that explanation, and it will allow me to enjoy it without scrutinizing. Um, And, like, that was my only real problem with it. Otherwise, it works really well. It's really clever. That's something that it it finally took care, take cares of. It finally took care of something that's been around with a lot of these uh, Doctor Who crossover things where, like... In the very first one, the three doctors shouldn't like Hartnell just be able to tell them everything they or uh, not Hartnell shouldn't the uh, Perchwee just be able to tell them everything they have to do and it's all good to go. Uh, they, uh, their memories get wiped at the end. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that they like firmly established the memory wipe thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was really well well yep. and and it made everything work a lot better. Uh, so, and that was the that was the really genius thing where it validates all of the guilt doctor stuff from the past seasons, as well as giving us this new optimistic ending. I was so happy that they were able to end this 50th anniversary that was dealing with this giant tragic event in the doctor's past directly and end it optimistically. That was really cool. Ooh, ooh, um, going back to the whole, like, memory wipe, um, they should know what's going on, but they can't because their memory gets wiped. Another kind of cool thing that's sort of in that same vein, I really like the explanation for how they can, the past doctor can start a calculation, and then all of a sudden the future doctor automatically has the answer. Oh, that was so genius. I thought that was so well done. Ultimately, the one with the door turns out to be pointless because it's like... Well, no, that's just seeding it, though. That's what... Yeah, that was, no, that I was know, just, I know, that, that I was know. just setting up the thing for the end. That, that's something that I forgot to mention during the review. Plus, that's just a doctor moment. They think so. They think too hard about something, and it ends up being it's something like, where they're just like, we could have just opened the door. <laughs> they, I love that expression. Like, they're all, they're all like, oh, we thought of everything, and... It, it, oh... They're so proud yeah. of themselves. I'm imagining, like, if, if, you know, they were to do it, they would have given themselves medals. And then they're like, that's our moment spoiled. <laughs> they were just about to disintegrate that door and feel really good about themselves. And then she yeah, just yeah. comes through the and says it Claire wasn't came in, if, she, if Clara came in a second too late, she would have been a goner. <laughs> Crap all over her, all, all over their moment. Um, 
Deadpoolzilla, final thoughts on the Day of the Doctor. Loved it. I love love the little references. I love the uh, the uh, the stuff in it. It was a great story, in my opinion. Uh, not, I wouldn't say. I don't know if I'd call it favorite. Give it a little more time to work grow on me. But as I agree it, with that. as it stands, I think they did a really damn good job with the 50th anniversary uh, and how to tell it. Because, like you said, they went from a very this very somber and very dark point in the Doctor's life and left it on off an optimistic note without completely destroying. Uh, everything that Davies set up and without changing anything. Yeah, without, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, like, uh, we had a great story for John Hurt's Doctor, and having this uh, great optimistic scene for him and him. You actually see, like, when he's regenerating into Eccleston, you see him kind of smiling and laughing about it. Yep. Oh, by the way, I think I mentioned this earlier, but we now have canon regenerations for all of the Doctors. Yes, you yeah, did say that, I think that I mentioned because that it's like a debate over number three, remember? Okay, I just want to, I just want to make sure I'm messing that, because Eccleston's my favorite Doctor. Okay, now, okay, guys, you need to confirm one thing. David Tennant was the Doctor. What? Um, <laughs> oh, wait, wanna, major spoiler here, up, major cause... spoiler here. This this involves aliens. Um. <laughs> major spoiler? Yeah. Major. Doctor Who's been around for 50 years. Um, yeah. But no, um, I liked it, and I can't wait for the Christmas special because it it should be called it's it, it'll probably be called like something Trenzalore or some or Silence Will Fall or something like that. I just kind of call it because we see the angels, we see the Daleks, we see the Cybermen. It's that title should be just be called the Doctor Gets Fucked. <laughs> the Doctor Gets Fucked. And then Stephen Moffat. And then River shows up. Like, <laughs> wow, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait till they. I can't wait to see how they take that amazing story and then rope the whole Christmas thing into it. <laughs> if Christmas oh, yeah. is even gonna be there, I, I imagine it's gonna be called Fall of the Eleventh. It could be because any of those what, titles. Not yeah, not, it could be Silence. The doctor gets fucked. The the actual. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Duke, don't take that possibility away from me. Oh, Even yeah. off it's not going to. He, I like to think the man's smart enough to realize. When you read the title card out loud, it's going to say, The Doctor Gets Fucked by Stephen Moffat. I don't think it's going to that. <laughs> that would be crazy. No, but I, no, no, in, my, in my version. Title. They're going to go with a more cinematic title, like Eleven Rises. Or... Oh, Jesus, God, that'd be awesome. Um, anyway. Or something to do with darkness, because that's the... <laughs> the Doctor into darkness. Um, D- uh, Dylan, final thoughts. I love the hell out of it. I, um, I don't really have any like major, major complaints with it. Um, no, I'm not do I. And I'm, I, I don't really know what I could say that you guys haven't already said. It's, it's great. Um, it's everything that I wanted a fiftieth special to be. I, I kind of expected the story to be um, on a bit more of an epic scale, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad that they didn't do that, just because the, um, Moffat's very good at playing around with your expectations. Um. So yeah, I mean that's that's really all I have to say about it. it, it I liked it. <laughs> Duke, final thoughts. Okay. Uh, about much deliberation. Um, I really did enjoy this. Thinking about it because I've been following a lot of the different kinds of things that have been done for anniversaries. Um, I've been I've been reading the IDW series Prisoners of Time, which has been pretty good on the because the format is. They're solo stories with a framing device. Most of the solo stories are great. The framing device is boring until you find out who the villain is. Then it's really stupid. For those of you who are never going to read it, it's that punk Adam from series one. What? He's a ma- he's this, he's masterminding this whole plan of stealing the Doctor's companions. What the fuck? Yes. Why? At, for revenge? For revenge, for le- making him a freak. Because remember, oh, he's left wow. with a hole in his forehead. He made that him... is kind of a that is kind of a, 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 a plot hang. Uh, well, a plot line that left hang that was like, what the fuck happened to that guy? Well, I mean, no, no, and then you realize, wait a minute, he was less interesting than cardboard. <laughs> fuck that guy. He can live with his freaky little forehead. But yeah, I mean, yeah, no, well, I had to douche. read that. I've had to listen to uh, Big Finishes. Uh, uh, 50th anniversary story at the end, which I've like it came out last month and I couldn't shut about shut up about it for like a week. And there was also another audiobook series called uh, Destiny of the Doctors, which was like Prisoners of Time but not stupid. It didn't have a stupid framing device. Uh, 
I will say out of all of those main four that I was looking at, I liked Light at the End a lot more, but to be fair, Light at the End had technically eight doctors in it. And just, I think that kind of won me over a little bit more, but I, I think both were great stories. Uh, Destiny of the Doctors was uh, pleasant, but I really did like Day of the Doctor. I, I had I had good expectations for it. I wanted it to be something that, you know, just made me happy upon watching it, and it did more than that. And I I don't know, I can't tell you which one of my favorites right now. I need to give this some time. Maybe a year's time I'll tell you where it stands, but Right now, I enjoyed it. I, I watched it uh, two times, so clearly I didn't say, well, I'm never going to see that again. I watched it the moment it went off and went on my DVR and watched it again. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Our thoughts on The Day of the Doctor. Now, I would say let's do scores, but I kind of got a feeling we're all going to go for similar scores, if not identical. But, I mean, I'll say mine. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 out of sheer entertainment factor. There was not a moment of this where I wasn't smiling from ear to ear. So 5 out of 5 for me. Anybody else have a definite score they want to throw out there? Not everyone has to do it if they don't want to. Uh, it's it's a 5 out of 5 for me as well. I, I did enjoy it. I Like I said, I had a small problem with it. But taken on its own terms, it's really good. Um, mm-hmm. Anybody else want to throw out a score or they, they you, know, you know you don't care? It's I don't do scores. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. And my score yeah. is pretty much going to be like yours and Ian's. Yeah, yeah. I, I just basically agree with what you just said. I, I'm... And that's why I didn't go it official way. So five out of five for the Day of the Doctor from all of us here at the Day of the Doctor Review. Um, Before we go, I promised we'd talk about this briefly. Um, Which means the video there... is going to be another hour and a half long. <laughs> no, I'm going to try and keep this brief. All right, so let's talk very briefly about the little minute trailer we got for the Christmas special at the end of Day of the Doctor. We saw next to nothing and know next to nothing about it except they're going to do Trenzalore. And so, these monsters are going to show up. It's basically going to be like the Legion of Doom for the Doctor. Or well, when you Arkham say it, Asylum or Arkham Asylum for the Doctor. When you say it like that, it, it sounds even cooler than the trailer. They should have made that the, ta- the tagline, Legion of Doom for the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I, from what we got, it looks like it's going to be all of the Doctor's major enemies, the Daleks, the Cybermen, all these different characters, and throw them into one special. I wish, and you know, you guys, are gonna, this is going to sound so typical of me because I say this every time, like, oh, what do you want to see from the next series of Doctor Who? Oh, I just want to see one little bit of the Master in there. I just want Smith's Doctor to meet the Master once. Just one time. Just, even if it's like at a coffee shop, just briefly. Yeah. Passing mention. Um, well, you know the Master went through that he, thing. He, could, he could meet the Master from that cartoon I told you about because... Yes! The Derek Jacobi. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Here's the thing about that, that, that Master. Here's the thing about that Master. It's not actually the Master. It's a robot copy that he keeps in the TARDIS. What? <laughs> That sounds creepy. <laughs> yeah, Matt it's not Smith. sane. I can tell you that. Matt Smith meets <laughs> Eric Roberts after he's already been possessed. Like he, tra- like... like he put his consciousness in a body to keep, him, basically, to keep him out of trouble. No, but, oh, okay. But, but see, Bill, Matt, the master went through that thing at the end of end of time. The end of end of time. So, um, I'm assuming he's now on Gallifrey. So now that that's not burnt up, they can bring him back. And um, no, but that would mean Rassilon's still alive. Well, yeah. Oh, Good night, everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> Villains don't die in Doctor Who, Bill. They just That's sort true. of go away for a while. They take long naps. I want the, damn it, I want the Crotons back. They turn into so little I, worms Tyler, and, so and slither into people's mouths. <laughs> that was weird. Since when can Time Lords man. become snake monsters? Bring um, back the candy, man. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't mean Tony Todd, either. Anyway, I want the Master in the fall, whatever the Christmas special is going to be. If it's revealed that he was the one uh, to blow up the TARDIS, I'll be pleasantly surprised because either that or they have to explain who blew up the TARDIS. They have to right. at the at this Christmas special. I want to know right. whose voice kept saying silence will fall. That's, that's all I want. <laughs> well, we're going to find, we're finally going to find out what the deal with the silence. Oh, we forgot to mention the silence is going to be in it. Um, so they're coming back after a full season of not being mentioned at all. Um, That's so okay. I'm excited. They didn't have to be mentioned instantly. 
No, fair enough. Yeah. But everybody keeps forgetting like about them, you know. Huh? And one more thing we forgot to mention: the the question will be asked. <gasps> we might find out the doctor's name. Or how many licks does it take to get to the center of that goddamn pistol? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yes, we figured it out. We the found that fucking nephew. owl. We're gonna get the goddamn <laughs> answers out of him. <laughs> For the years, they keep rerunning that goddamn commercial and torturing. Tantalizing, cock teasing fuck. That's the big reveal at the end of the Doctor Who thing. It's not his name, it's the number of looks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop. And you just see the owl that's the real thing that was, that, was cur- that was haunting him for all these years. They just forgot that seed and day of the duck. That owl is the villain of the Christmas special. He's trying to prevent the truth from getting out. We find out that owl was, in fact, the master. No, he regenerated the into a bird. Master. The rabbit was the master. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. It makes perfect <laughs> sense if you don't think about it too hard. <laughs> no, 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 no. For certain rabbit, versions of I do not master, trust that it rabbit. It makes perfect sense without thinking about it because you know that master. All right, I've I've got nothing else to say. I'm. I don't. I again, it's just the doctor's gonna die, and they're bringing out shit to make him die. Yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing because the what we see of the TARDIS in the name of the Doctor, that's the TARDIS of that season. So. Yeah. How they're gonna explain that's gonna be cool. Yeah, and you know this is Matt Smith's final story. Right. So that's another big thing. Um. So is it's going to be interesting. Going to be like a special, like extra long, or what are we talking here? I don't it's just know. going to be like Christmas. It's a Christmas special, so it's going to be as long as those usually are. Okay. It's going to be claymation. <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be claymation and shown in intervals of two seconds. Uh, no, the, the whole thing <laughs> is one of those little like Lego animations you see on YouTube. <laughs> no, no, no. Even better. It's going to be done entirely through subliminal, subliminal messaging. They're going to play like some. They're going to rerun some past episode and just slowly, subliminally message the entire episode into your mind, and by the time it's over, you're going to be like, holy shit, did I just watch it? Oh my <laughs> god, Matt Smith's dead now. <laughs> they can't afford to, uh, they can't afford to, like, film the Battle of Trinzalore, so you just have a, a pan shot over, like, an oil painting with, like, sound no, effects going released, in the background. Even better, they released it as a flip book. <laughs> you have to flip they, this no, giant... They released, flip. It on, they released it on flip book and the audio on wax cylinder... <laughs> so nobody can listen to it. And the whole time, it's just fucking Stephen Moffat doing all the sound effects and voices himself. <laughs> really low, it's really low-end production. No, 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 but in all seriousness, it's, most of the Christmas specials have been like like 60 minutes without commercials, so it's probably going to be that long. Okay. Probably. Probably. I was yeah. wondering about that, because it's going to be weird for Matt Smith to go... Like, this doesn't feel like a last, like, ending... Um, spiral for Matt Smith episodes, if that makes sense. Um, no, it didn't. See, well, the series was, seven. The thing yeah. about it was, uh, which like David Tennant, like they didn't. Like, he had a couple specials to go through before he was done. Like he was announced to be done a few weeks before Next Doctor came out. Mm-hmm. So everyone was like, and they knew more were coming, so they more or less got that mentality to build up. We. Well, for like a few weeks, people, like, everyone was actually pretty sure he was confirmed for Series A, but then he said to himself that, no, I'm done. And they were just done finishing Day of the Doctor, so there was no, we don't have as much time to prepare that mindset where, oh, he's gone. Yeah, right. The thing is, this is the first. um, A last minute decision, because it just doesn't feel like that's what this was leading up to with the the Right. But, I mean, the thing is, this is the first, like, big character regeneration since End of Time. And, like, End of Time is is sort of unique, if I'm not mistaken. They don't always make such a big deal when, like, the Doctor regenerates. Like, like look at Eccleston. It's like the end of his season, and all of a sudden uh, he kisses Rose, and now he has to regenerate. They don't always do this, like, big build-up thing like they did with Tenet. Eccleston's was like, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't always... It's... The story that led up to Eccleston's regeneration was paced over the entire season, though. Right, you know, no, fair enough, but I'm just saying, he was like... Hey Rose, I'm dead. But but with the, Bye! Hey, Rose. David Tennant, I, I like, like you. I look great. Guess what? <laughs> but with David Tennant, it was like this big thing where it's like, here's five specials where he knows he's dying and he's all angsty. And about now it. we're going to wave goodbye to every person he ever talked to. <laughs> That's one thing about End of Time that on one end I like, on the other end I'm like, why are we doing this? I liked it. So 
It's fun, but honestly, um, I, I hate to be mean, but it just seems like Russell T. Davies kind of jacking himself off, like, I did all of this! <laughs> yeah, it's like Russell T. Davies is he's sad. He's actually coming on the fucking script. Russell it's T. Davies like, is ah! sad that he's leaving, and he wants you to be sad as well. Uh, he wants you to be just as sad as he is that he's leaving. And, and what's yeah. really weird about it is that, like, Martha, Martha and... So- Martha and Mickey look up at the doctor, and he's just standing there, and he walks away. And all of a sudden, they embrace as if they know what that means. And I was like, he didn't say anything. (laughs) He could have literally just been there for your death. What the hell? Here's my thing. Since when are they a thing? Yeah, no, that doesn't... The reality of it uh, was they... uh, He was trying to figure out how to get them, like, get them all in. And I guess they... I don't know if this is true, but he was going to just have him in that scene with Rose and Jackie at the end, but he couldn't film on that day. So they just said, I'll work in some other way. Okay, you're married to Martha and you're freedom fighters now or something. No one cares. Here's care. my, yeah, that's here's the thing. my Nobody's thing. Nobody's got enough respect for Mickey. It's like, okay, where are we going to stick Mickey? Um, he's with Martha. I, don't, I hate, let me just say this. I hate Mickey with a searing passion. Just saying. Here's the other thing. In series four, they make a big deal out of the fact that Martha's getting married. I know that you, you just say it. Yeah, apparently um, it was to Mickey. Arthur didn't even know. Where did she even meet Mickey? Yeah, they shared no dialogue with each other. The only <laughs> time of, you see them like interact was when he, Mickey ran off with with Martha and Jack. Yeah, on that idea, was, I'm more shocked he didn't get married to Jack. That would be like Sorry, if all of a sudden. That would be like if all of a sudden, for no reason, Clara became Stormageddon's stepmom. Exactly. That would be bizarre. It was literally just like, oh, I need to, oh, I need Noel Clark in here somehow. I'll just put him here. For... Right. Right. Like I guess I see why people didn't love the end of time, but I really, I, I did not know there was that big of a problem with it. Um, so I guess I was kind of shocked that they'd even contradicted a tiny bit um because i love no it. it's not one that everyone's like oh yeah david Tennant left that's all we're talking about about it yeah yeah the, i mean some it's, people it's pretty, treat it to that much respect i, I don't mean pretty, to be mean to you do but it's not liked well it's pretty 50 50 for me i mean i don't really yeah i'm safe here love like, it all the way and i don't really I like, hate it i like i like tenant i like uh i like bernard cribbins but um, yeah, that's that's the thing that I, I mean. The biggest thing I love about the end of time is the emotional level. It is an emotional episode. Mm-hmm. Here's my problem: I don't like the master's plan. I think it's dumb. The master's yeah. plan makes no sense. Everything that happens, almost everything that happens in the first part of the end of time, sort of becomes inconsequential once Rassilon shows up, doesn't it? Like, yeah, a little bit. Everything, like, a little Mark bit. Donna's in there for no goddamn reason other than to give us something to be afraid of. I'm just like, why is the master doing this? I like. It, why does the master seems... trust himself to make a billion copies of himself? Here's my thing. It kind of, sort of seems like something he might do, but not in this way. Because this whole thing is the universe doesn't make any sense. I have to turn it all into. I I have to be the one who makes it make sense because I'm the master. But I don't know. The way they do it is kind of like this is kind of dumb. And the thing um, the thing with Donna actually kind of gets to me, because it's like, you remember that big emotional thing from the end of season four? Yep. Well, that's gone. We're not doing she, anything with it. Because her brain's not going to burn up. She's just going to have like a little, like, explosion, and then she's going to fall to the ground. It's all going to be good. Mm. But, true, but truly a star of the end of time is both Tenet and Wolfer. They're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so um, glad we could review end of time. Yeah, well, and also one last thing. Um, the fight scene between the master and the doctor at the beginning is also really cool. <laughs> it, I don't I don't know why the master has lightning powers, but I'm cool with it. Because yeah. it looks it, cool. It so, really cool. it really it really sucks that the doctors can't remember what happened in these crossover things because Matt Smith could be like, Hey, tell Wilfred uh, not to get in that thing, you know, the glass thing. <laughs> tell him to stay out well, of no, there. You couldn't tell him that because then he wouldn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> he would eventually, just not then. <laughs> Well, maybe not, because regenerations are always based around when the person regenerates. I don't know. So he might be like... Yeah, like might, there's an audio series thought. that has a bunch of, like, what-if scenarios, um, no, and in one of them he does regenerate into a woman. Oh, really? Yes, it's a... Uh, I haven't listened to it. It's a comedy. David Tennant shows up in it as, yeah. like, a random Time Lord keeping an eye on her. 
he's a fuck. He, he's it's a moment of sexual questioning where he's just like, I wonder if I lock dick, and then he regenerates. Um, uh, I don't know if I remember. I didn't realize right, it was, I didn't realize to get it out was of that. the trial. The, it, the idea is it's the second doctor trying to get out of like the, you know, because it's right after you know he gets c- captured by the Time Lords at the end of his last story, and he commits suicide and then hides off to Earth. Yeah. I don't think that's the time where you think, do I like dick, is when you commit suicide. Duke, you don't know! Maybe when maybe when a moment like a moment like that would strike you, maybe that's what your first thought will be. See, see I know this was implied, but oh. I never realized that the... I never realized... <laughs> I never realized that the regenerations... So, I'm sorry, dude. That was really dark. I apologize. I never realized that the regenerations were this closely tied to like what was going on in the Doctor's life at that moment. I thought it was just well, tied well, to who they cast. To, um, to be devil's advocate on that part, well, okay, six to seven makes no goddamn sense. Oh, a woman with gigantic fuzzy hair made me trip over myself. Now I'm Sylvester <laughs> McCoy. Right? It's like all of a sudden I'm like Colin Baker had Colin Baker had bad legs. No, all well, of a sudden Colin I'm Baker like was the Riddler at the time. So. No, I know. Yeah. Um, Colin Baker's legs sucked in that episode because <laughs> his legs failed him. Like fuck. Um, I got shot right, in boys. L.A. Now I'm a dandy. Um, <laughs> anyway. All right, all right, boys. We've gone deep into this. I think we've covered the gamut of things on the day of the Doctor. I'd like to thank all of you guys for joining me on this wonderful adventure through the Day of the Doctor. Um, And that's going to do it for our review. So thank you very much for watching, and look out for other stuff coming in the future. If you didn't notice, Dylan and I are not doing Sons of Sarazawa right now, so there's a little bit of a question going around between him and I whether or not there's going to be an episode this weekend, because I know Andres wanted to try and do one with him, uh, him, David, and Adam. And I don't know if they're still going to do it because they should have recorded it tonight and they haven't popped on... Oh, yes, they are online. Yeah, they're all online. Oh, what they're are you doing it. About? Oh, they're doing it now. Okay, never mind. Uh, I fucked up on that one. So they're doing Sons of Sarazawa as we're recording this. So yeah. sorry, guys. Unfortun- You're going to have it. Unfortunately, unlike the fictional character that we're currently discussing, we can't be here and there at the same time. Um, right. So we will not be on Sons of Sarazawa this week. They will be doing an episode all by their lonesomes. It will still go up on my channel, and it will still be an episode, so we'll see how that goes. Um, anyway, so that's going to do it. Does anyone have anything they want to announce or get out to the people? Or And we lost... Who did we lose? Did we lose somebody? No, no. no. We, I don't think did we lost we lose anybody. Somebody? Somebody? I, I, I dropped <laughs> out for a sec. Oh, all right. Did, um, okay, that was weird. I was like, "Who the fuck did we lose?" And everyone's like, "We didn't lose anybody." And I was like, "What? Yeah, I did, did we lose all twelve of them? No, thirteen of them. <laughs> we lost thirteen of them." <laughs> you asked if anybody had anything to announce, and nobody did. So, oh, I, okay. I have something to announce. Uh, two things. No, just one thing. Uh, geeky gentlemen, we're doing Clerks One and Clerks Two. Uh, fuck week. yes, we are. So check that out. That'll be a lot of fun. Oh yeah. I'm a big Kevin Smith fan, so I'm excited. Um, do I have anything to announce? Not really. Um, look out for Demons from Outer Space coming this week again. Third episode's up now. Sorry I went up late. I literally fell asleep editing, so it's up a little late, but it's up, so go check it out. It's fun, and we talk about some wacky shit in that, don't we, Dylan? Yes. Lots of porn in that episode. Um, a lot of porn in that episode. It's weird. Lo- it's like... talked a lot about porn. It was bizarre. Um, anyway... So that's going to do it for this review of the Day of the Doctor. I'm Zazubar. I'm Sid Part 2. Uh, I'm Deadpoolzilla, I guess. <laughs> Wait, who is next? <laughs> Epic. Let's, I mean, let's go in the order that I introduced you guys, because that, that's what makes that, sense. That's what I'm saying. Um, w- what order did you introduce me and Duke? I no longer remember. Um, it was you. Okay, fine. Let's redo this. Uh, me. Ian, Deadpoolzilla, you, I, I and then think, Duke. I think this is done. I think you should just end the recording now, though. Goodbye, no! everybody! No, I will not end it here. I'm Zazibar. <laughs> I'm Sid Part 2. I'm Deadpoolzilla. I'm Super DM64, and we probably should have worked this order out earlier. Um. Goodbye, everybody! <laughs> That's it for this review. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.